What's happening, weirdos? This is the return of the very, very funny Kurt Braunohler. Brown Oler. Braunohler. Kurt Braunohler. He's hilarious. He has a new special out currently and for a limited time on Moment. You need to go to perfectlystupid.com to check that out. I've since watched it, since this recording. It is incredible. You'll see there's a little mix-up at the beginning. It's very funny. Uh, but you need to check this out. And it is on only uh, for a limited time, and then it'll be on video on demand. But go to perfectlystupid.com to check it out. If you'd like to see me doing some stand-up, I am currently on tour. I'm going to be in Chicago this weekend. So if you're watching this the week it comes out, I'm coming to Chicago to be at The Den November 10th through 12th. Go to PeteHolmes.com for tickets. After Chicago, I'll be in San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Atlanta, Charlotte, and Washington, D.C., Hopefully going to be adding some more dates as well because the tour has been so fun. I really love this new hour and it's just been so great to be back together again. Hopefully you can make it to a show. Yeah, let's leave that in. Uh, just go to PeteHolmes.com to see if I am coming to be near you. Hopefully you like this podcast. Hopefully you want to support this podcast. The way to support it, we don't have a Patreon or a Donate. Just try a product, try a Pete's Pick, some of the things that I use and actually love, like our friends at Blue Land, who remind us that the holidays can create even more waste than usual. Each year, Americans throw away 25% more trash from Thanksgiving to New Year's. But what if we told you there was a way to get all your holiday shopping done without the guilty feeling over the waste that typically comes with it. Well, meet Blue Land. Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastic, which is horrible. Get rid of that single-use plastic, and they're doing it by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and for the planet. And this holiday season, Blue Land is having its best sale of the year, so you can save and shop sustainably for your friends, family, and even yourself. The idea is simple. Grab one of the beautiful forever bottles that they make, fill it with warm water, drop in the tablet, and get cleaning. This is the whole idea. Instead of buying a new bottle every time, let Blue Land sell you a forever bottle and a refillable, reusable tablet. Refills start at $2.25, and you don't have to buy a new plastic bottle every time you run out, which is amazing. You can even set up a subscription or buy in bulk so you never run out of products that you use the most. From cleaning sprays to hand soap to toilet cleaner and laundry tablets, all Blue Land products are made with ingredients you can feel good about. Try their Clean Essentials Kit, which has everything you need to get started in signature scents such as iris agave, fresh lemon, and eucalyptus mint, a personal flavor, euc mint. Plus, for a limited time, Blue Land's hand soap is getting a festive upgrade with a beautiful chocolate box-inspired gift set with cozy scents like evergreen, winterberry, and peppermint. I wish my last name was Winterberry and I was British. So if you want products that are good for you, good for the planet, and make you feel better about the plastic problem, which is a big concern, obviously, for me, with stuff that works, 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 all of their stuff works incredible. It feels great to use, and you feel great for doing the right thing. Take advantage of their best sale of the year. Go to blueland.com slash YMIW. You don't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash YMIW. That's blueland.com slash YMIW. And show your support of this show. Secondly, the holidays are officially upon us and it's time to start celebrating, but I mean like actually celebrating. It's your holiday too, so you should be able to relax and do what you love. That means watching every single seasonally themed rom-com like it does for me and Val. So be it. Do your thing and holiday your way with our friends at MeUndies. It's the most wonderful time of the year to try MeUndies because they're currently offering a very merry deal. Get 20% off your first purchase with free shipping. Uh, with free standard shipping and free returns when you go to MeUndies.com slash weird. Let me see what I got today. Dinosaurs. Leela loves these. I'm wearing my dinosaur MeUndies. I heard about MeUndies on another podcast that I'm a fan of years ago. Val and I did a top to tails overhaul of our underwear. 
or loungewear, PJ pants, all, onesies, all of that stuff because their micro modal fabric is incredibly soft, they fit great, and they have amazing prints. So get your holiday shopping finished early this year and start making time for yourself with the new MeUndies Holiday Collection. Their undies, loungewear, and sleepwear are made out of the softest, most supple fabric you've ever felt and are guaranteed to bring comfort and joy to your loved ones. Shop their classic plaid prints for a traditional picture-perfect style or get festive with their adventurous limited edition sweater prints. That's the one I go with. <laughs> Available in sizes extra small through 4XL, MeUndies has what you need to make all your favorite people smile this holiday season all in one convenient place. And feel free to start thinking about yourself now. They, they, I, I'm part of their subscription, so I get new MeUndies. I don't know what they've done recently, but they're even more comfortable. For the past year or so, they re reinvigorated the whole thing, and I love them even more. So, to get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash weird. That's MeUndies.com slash weird, and show your support of this show. Last but not least, our friends from Ritual. Ritual has completely revitalized and reinvented what, how I think about vitamins and probiotics and has changed my life so much for the better. It's literally my ritual and always makes me feel ready to start my day. I'm so happy when I go to the doctor and they tell me that my vitamins are all where they need to be, which is, can be tricky, especially uh, if you're like me and are mostly vegan. But here I'm going to talk about their new Symbiotic Plus, which is a pre, pro, and postbiotic all in one place. So we're talking about gut health, and they're not all the same. Let me ask you, does your probiotic contain clinically studied strains? Well, meet one that does. Ritual Symbiotic Plus contains two of the world's most studied strains with over 350 publications of human clinical trials. Gut health comes up a lot, especially on the We Made It Weird episodes. It's like a second brain. It's the central, well, it's not literally your central nervous system, but it's like the grand central station of your body is your gut. And our food these days is just not cutting it, so you have to supplement. And I have tried a lot of different kinds, and let me tell you, Ritual Symbiotic Plus ticks all of the boxes. What makes the, their components so clearly Ritual? Well, they're science-backed and research-stacked, especially when stacked up against the leading direct-to-consumer and top-selling probiotics on the market. It's more than a probiotics, it's three-in-one with clinically studied prebiotics, which is like the food for probiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. Single nested, it means it's one pill wrapped in a minty capsule. There's not a bad taste, in fact, there is a good taste. You open the bottle, it smells like mint, you put it in your mouth, tastes like mint, and you are getting streamlined gut support from a wonderful daily simple minty capsule designed to thrive in your colon, not your stomach. There's a delayed release, which is the ideal place for probiotics to survive and grow. And best of all, you do not need to refrigerate them. You can keep them right in your cupboard. So Symbiotic and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. There's no more shame in your gut game. To make something, uh, to make trying something new easier, Ritual is offering weirdos 10% off for their first three months when you shop online at ritual.com slash weird. Prefer to shop in person? Ritual is now available at Whole Foods Market. Or go to ritual.com slash weird. Get your, uh, what is it? I want to, I just said it, 10% off for the first three months and show your support of this show. All right, everybody, be sure to go to perfectlystupid.com to watch Kurt's new special. Hope to see you on the road. Hope to see you in Chicago this weekend. In the meantime, enjoy my chat with the hilarious Kurt Brown. All our, all our Kurt Brown all our. Get into Tropics, it. like lion's mane. Okay. Help you think. A little bit of caffeine, tiny bit of caffeine, like a cup of green tea. Okay. And a little honey, and it makes me feel fantastic. I'm in. We should have cheered. Mm. Cheers the empties. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. Interested in that. As a um, stand-up writer, nothing better. For real? I mean... They do sponsor the pod, but it went like this. I discovered it, yeah. and I reached out to them. But like, oh, really? before I do shows, it's like um, 
Because for me, I just listened to your special, by the way, and oh. it's phenomenal. Oh, I say listen because on the drive down, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it on Paramount Plus. Oh, nice. Not watching the video, but just okay. the audio coming through the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was howling, man. It's oh, fantastic. Thanks. On Paramount Plus. That's how I found it. Did you watch the you watch the 2017 one? What do you mean? You watch Trust Me? That's not the new one? No, no, no. That's I from typed 2017. In Kurt Brown Oler new special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and that's what came up. Yeah, yeah, you watched the old Are one. I love it. Are you fucking kidding me? I love that you watched the old one though. This is no a, one's this watched is the a old humiliation. one. Humiliation. No, no, that's okay. I knew, I knew. Oh, Curtis. That's okay. But I want you to feel welcome and celebrated. And I was like, you just listened to an hour of me doing stand up comedy. I, know, I feel but, welcome. Okay, good. You I, know. Okay, as long as you don't feel like, what the fuck is this? Because I was no. like, I'm gonna do it the morning. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. So I can gush about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I watched the old one. Yeah, you watched the one. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's on. It was well, like. Well, I'll tell you this. <laughs> it ends with the beaver joke. Yes. Nothing yeah, made me yeah. more excited to see more of your content. <laughs> I should have known because you were like, I've only been married two years. I, I yeah. remember being like, this that seems doesn't weird. Seem <laughs> and no baby material. Yeah, no baby. Ma- yeah, the new hour is all about being a dad. Shit, man, which yeah. is right up my alley. Yeah. We and, can, but now it's all we can just talk about being well, dads. That's true. Yeah, and I'm excited about that. But I will watch it before I do the intro, and I'll talk earnestly about oh, it in thank the you. intro. I, I don't. I, I'm not. This isn't coming from a place of uh, defense. I'm not like I'm so secret, <laughs> but like I want to promote it. Yeah. Also, thank tell you. me about how you put it out because somebody, yeah. somebody told me it's kind of this thing. Fucking get it, get it down, get it down. Trying to get in between us. <laughs> Just like a, make a gif out of this. JK, not a good uh, gif. When would you send that gif? So it is on Moment. Uh huh. And so it lives Which on Bart Moment. Coleman? Yeah, Bart, yep. Bart works there. And <clears throat> so it lives there for three weeks. Three moments. And moment. you can go and watch a it as many times. Week. Yeah, a moment, three moments. <laughs> three moments. <laughs> a moment is actually 12 quibbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 12, A quibby was <laughs> three eighths of a day. It was what a half a see so. <laughs> what half a CISO, 12 quibbies are three moments. Exactly. Is how long They're you get to watch same it. On <laughs> so, go on. so it's like you just pay 10 bucks, you get to watch it for those three weeks. Love. And then it disappears off of there. And then you own it again. Yeah, and then it eventually it will go up on like Amazon and <laughs> VOD for about a month. This and then, so it's part of a Amazon yeah. company. Uh, it'll be on just vi- video on demand sites, so like, like you all pay of it. them. Like yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. like you nine ninety nine. You can exactly. watch Kurt. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. own it. Uh, I guess you own it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you really own anything? Nothing. It's that kind of podcast. Is it? Can you? Own <laughs> no. <laughs> I do want to say, Aggressive. even though I listened to the wrong one, you you got all my sillies going. Oh, thank like it's you. It's a good special. It's a silly. It's a silly special. But just I, we're gonna get back to a moment. I won't yeah. forget. But you're you're a silly performer, and yeah. and I'm a silly beans. Yeah. And and like watching someone do it so well, I know it's the old one, but um, it, it's just like it reminded me. You remind me as a performer of what I love about stand up. Oh, thank like you. Like these like shockingly dirty things out of nowhere yeah. and then like very silly things. It's all out of nowhere, but like that that's what you choose to do with your time up there and I have to assume in the new one it's the same yeah. same kind of same kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same it's oh, you. same kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have a no, the, the new one I think has an emotional core to it Ooh. that the, like the old one doesn't. Like is there yeah, exactly. An, it's no an emotional it's core. It's nugget it right in the middle. <laughs> nugget is <laughs> An nugget emotion. Is, what is nugget? Nugget. It's got to be emotion. First of all, I say nugget. You say nugget. I say nugget. I nugget? just realized that I say nugget. Say that uh, must be Jersey. What is J.J. Abrams's production company? I don't even know. Oh, you don't. Um, <laughs> what is it called? What is the Jetsons made? What is she? Oh, uh, oh man, Nelly? No, 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 not her name. <laughs> not her name. Just like fundamentally. Oh, a robot. A robot. I don't say robot because I feel like n- nugget. What do you say? <laughs> nugget. No, say it again. Nugget. Nugget? Yeah. What is it called when you knuckle someone's hair? A noogie. And then the core of a snicker of a Milky Way. <laughs> is it nu- is nugget? Is nugget. Yeah. Katie? Nougat. 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 What is the uh, controversial musician nugget. Ted? No, no, nugent. Nugent. <laughs> you you must say nugent. 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 <laughs> 
I say it I'm very European. <laughs> yeah. It says Nugent. <laughs> and nugget. It does if you were the foreign exchange student that you look like. Yes. You would go like, I love the Milky Way. It comes I with the nugget. <laughs> I can't even say it wrong. Nugget. I love the nugget. Nougat. 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 I think it's Jersey, honestly. It could be. I have OU stuff that comes out and I don't expect it. The OUs. Yeah. The umlauted. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to learn. I have an, I have an, aud- <laughs> I have an audition later today. <laughs> nice. <laughs> for those listening to the audio and not watching the video, first of all, shame on you. <laughs> Second, JK. Secondly, I just dropped my mic. Uh, and I was trying to learn a Pittsburgh accent. And it was oh. all about what they do with the OUs, apparently. Those are, that's tough, man. I also, Gotta you know what I'm going to say at the top of the uh, audition? Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. I want to know if you respect the game or if okay. you go like Pete, okay. back it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, if you give me the part, I'll get the accent right. I love that. Like, what yes. am I going to devote seven hard ones? Yeah. yeah. To de- like, and then just blow the idea. And then uh, now I just Because also, skill? what do they want? Do they want a funny person who can act or do they want someone who can nail a Pittsburgh accent? You have peeled. <laughs> there were two pages of a very thin encyclopedia and, and you peeled them together. And everything you needed to know about comedians, acting, auditioning yeah. was on those pages. And we just discovered them. It was like a... And there it was. <laughs> yep. And Mr. Bean is also there. <laughs> okay, um, go on. You have a Jersey accent. You say nugget. N- nugget. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember where else it comes out. <laughs> I know it comes out in something like, oh, it's the oys. Oys? I, 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 I hear myself saying it to my my kids, and I'm like, oh, they're going to th- they're gonna pick this up, and I think I should correct it, but I don't know oh, myself doing it. Oh, with Shauna. I say Shauna. Shauna? Yeah, instead of Shauna. How do you? Shauna? Shauna, yeah. Is that a name? Shauna is a Shauna? name. Shauna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that AU, that AU sound. And where it I appears go, in different places. Is that a name? Sorry, yeah, Kurt, is that a name? That? Shauna? Have you never heard that? I've heard of Chandra. Okay, I have as well. <laughs> <laughs> Where, how old were you when you re- realized? Because for me, it was, it's like a trope, but for me, it was very recently that gr- traditional speaking, uh-huh. gender normatively, girl names have boy versions. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. Uh, Br- like Francis. Brian. Brianna. <laughs> like, Brianna was just like a stubborn guy who wanted a Brian, and he was like, oh, yeah, Bri- Brianna. <laughs> That's a good bit. But there, there's... There, <laughs> first of all, as someone who's thirsty for bits, like for real. I know. I, oh, yeah, I know. I, I just you, released a new hour. I'm thirsty for bits. Can you also tell me... Uh, I will write that down, but can you tell me, now that I have children and what we're, yeah. we're getting, we're getting right into that carpool lane. Mm-hmm. Just get in the carpool lane. It's yeah. where we belong. I sometimes do it. And I would tell, if they pulled me over, I would say, I have kids. They're not in the car right now, but I have kids. I've heard people use the excuse, <laughs> I thought my baby was in the car seat. <laughs> That's what I've thought as well. Just be yeah. like, I could. Oh, I'm just so used to the baby being in the car. Yeah, I just that got I'm, in the, you know, I mean, I'm such a good dad. I always have my kid in the car. Right. And, he, and it's even buckled, even though they're not in it. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice that? I buckle air. I, I buckle <laughs> onions. <laughs> a bundle of onions are buckled in my car seat. That's like, I was warming up for an improv set. A bundle of, of onions is buckled in my car seat. Um, I couldn't even say it. Let's get in the carpool lane and talk about kids. Now that I have kids, I, f- I do find I have to be a little bit more effortful coming up with jokes. Meaning, mm-hmm. oh, my yeah. pre-kid lifestyle was just this. This is my pre-kid yeah. lifestyle. We're hanging out, we're farting around, and every once in a while I go, have you noticed that names have boy versions and yeah. girl versions? You say that's a bit. Now that 99, and I prefer this a million, I mm-hmm. actually think it's the opposite of crazy making. It's sane making. Yeah. Having something that you care about that exactly. isn't you would love to hear your thoughts on that. But I also find that like I don't, I don't have as many bits coming in, and I have to set side set time aside mm-hmm. to be like, I guess I'll think of a bit now or whatever, which I never used to do. And I didn't even notice until I went back out on the road, and like almost the moment I got on the plane by myself, I would be like, that's a bit. Like a thought that I had, like, that's a bit. Because you're not just, you, just, you know? And I was like, oh, shit, it's 
that's what my life used to be, but now yes. my life is always just like, you got to get the kid to the thing and then go and then take, make sure that, yes. and then everybody's got to eat. That one hasn't yes. eaten yet, yes. you know? It's just and like- And who's peed? And who's peed? You have three we bladders just, you're in charge of. We just did- Like, is there a greater uh, nightmare than I put Leela down and you go, did she pee? And you're like, she didn't pee. <laughs> And now I'm putting a diaper on a sleeping baby and I'm like half asleep. Like the, yeah. the whole rigmarole. Yeah. Go on. We just do, we're just doing potty training on my youngest now. PT? Old PT, man. And, you know what uh, the best PT is? I'm going to interrupt right now. What? No pants? Yeah, no pants. Yeah, we did no pants. Let him go nude. Yeah. He did shit on the floor once. I mean. It's fun. You ever seen a shit there, on the floor? Floors there. <laughs> they're so close. And also, they are, they're very close. And, and also, like, the fact that it happens like almost the way like a, like an alpaca shits, like where he's just like walking and then shits and then doesn't realize he's done it. And it's really? like, really? That's fascinating. There's no like little grunting pebbles? or anything. It's just like little MMs. They're just standing. I know they are perfection and yeah. they show you what pooping could and should be. Yeah. And it's not any longer. <laughs> My, it's like a buckshot now. <laughs> like, why, why, is, why is it occurring like this? And I look at Leela and what she, and they really can eat anything. I, I had a little of Leela's Halloween candy. Uh -huh. uh, don't tell her. She doesn't watch. <laughs> She's a cone and needs a friend, girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I uh, ate some of her candy. Heartburn, couldn't sleep. Like I, like I ate like an Almond Joy <laughs> like at 11 o'clock. And I was like, oh, more like Almond Agony, am I right? Nah, and then I was like, is. Good this, bit. Is, this, is, <laughs> this is what I mean. The bits, they come much they just more come labored. Naturally. No, they come more labored. I can't do them anymore. <laughs> so you're PTing. Uh, yeah, we're two. PTing. And so, yeah, that whole idea of just like, oh, man. And also not stressing them out. Where it's, I've noticed, that's the thing that I've, just recently noticed how quickly I go to like in my head of like, I can't deal with this anymore, you know? And I have to just constantly when you, When you stress them out with your stress. When, yeah, and I'm trying not to stress them out with I my stress. I say that stress. to Lila all the time. I go like, Lila, you're stressing me. Like I try to just, yeah. that's my strategy. I don't, I don't know if it's right yeah. or good or wrong. I or don't right, know. But I, I would have, let's just say I'm being the parent that is a exact response to the parents I had, mm -hmm. meaning... For better or worse, I personally would have loved it if my dad or my mom was just like, if my mom was like, "You're, I'm really stressed out right now. Like yeah. this is freaking me out. Yeah, I don't know what to do. But if you hear my voice, it's because I'm, I'm like panicking. I, you know, right. a little bit. Not in a situation where you need to be like strong yeah. or brave or have resolve. Lift I just a car. mean like she's been crying, and I'm like, Leela, like I hear it, and then I go, I'm stressed out. Yeah. And like sometimes she'll go like I'm sorry I stressed you out like after the storm, oh, and wow. I'm like, this is the best relationship I have. <laughs> it's pretty great. Isn't so it? it's, it's Leela said that. Oh, sorry, now we're just two dads talking. Yeah. I picked her up from school the other day, and she went, "How was your day? First, how was your day Whoa. of her life? That's crazy. How me. how old? She's fourteen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's four. When will that not be funny? It's always funny to yeah. get it wrong. But she's four. She just turned four. Okay, that's and great. I melted like an M and M in the car. Yeah, I, I was I was completely gone. Mike, neither of my kids have ever asked me how my day was. <laughs> that is, they could not give a shit. It's Golden Grounds. <laughs> yeah. they don't get. Well, I, she didn't want. This the is the answer. question. It's like it's like what's next? What what's next do I got today? And it's just like Jesus. You're an assistant. We got to dial this back. You're an assistant. Yeah, an exec. You're not even an executive assistant. Yeah, yeah. An executive just, assistant uh, wouldn't be like, excuse me, uh, Kurt. Uh, yeah. Are were the snacks here? Yeah, that's right. That would be the executive assistant way. But you do find that there's a humbling that is good. Mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. Talk totally. about it. Tell me about it because I could go on and on, but I, I I want this to be the Kurt Braunholer experience. I think that it's just yeah. I mean, like once you have a kid, I think, and my buddy Matt Donnelly told me this once. He's like, once you have a kid, you realize this is like parents and there's kids in the world. The whole world is broken down to parents and kids. And Meaning if, the people that don't have kids <laughs> just remain. Kids. Not Katie. It's not true. It's not Katie, true. It's Katie. not true. This I'll isn't true. Right That's not true of Katie. <laughs> not true, of Katie. Dog parent. Dog parent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give one eighth of a cup. <laughs> <laughs> one eighth of a cup. I had a dog before a baby. That was not prep. That no. was not prep at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's you mean the joke you that leave I, all day and you just leave it in the fucking house. That was house? the joke that I saw of yours recently that I love so much. Tell me of the dog. Like is like I know what. Like we're oh, the same yes. species. My dog. I have no yes. guess. They're just like my never dog ending just eye wants contact. Eye, yeah, never yeah. ending eye never contact. Never ending eye contact. Do you know? I wanted to tell you about this. That I think eye contact from a dog is <laughs> the dog trying to dominate you. 
That is, <laughs> is that real? I turned to Katie. Is it? Isn't it like eye contact? Because I know, I, I think like, I because my dog always makes eye contact with me and I'm like, oh, you think you, you run, you run, you think you run this house. You think you uh, run the streets. Whereas they're apparently, the, the whatever dog, the alpha dog, which has been debunked. Uh, what, alpha, what, do you, what do you mean? The alpha dog's been debunked. This is fascinating. Okay. Oh, let's get into this. Kick this down. <laughs> I want to talk about this. Tell Google me, this right now. We'll get the hard alpha details. Alpha Dog has been debunked by it's not the a person thing? who invented Alpha Dog. So it was a guy who followed a pack of wolves around. The quarterback at my high school? Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Johnny Q tip. Johnny Q tip? <laughs> he said, that was a bunch of bullshit. And then he threw a spiral perfect and like, at the no sun. No way. We think it's true, Johnny. <laughs> he threw it at the sun, and it was so hard and so far that after 28 minutes, Minutes, we heard a small sizzle. He hit the sun <laughs> and made sound travel through a vacuum. That, <laughs> he's that good, folks. <laughs> Actually, what we were hearing was someone else who threw a, 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 a fall at the sun seven years earlier. <laughs> Isn't that how long it takes? It's not seven years. A what for light? For to light to get eight from minutes. The, eight minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I got it. Seven years. <laughs> I thought if the sun burned out, would would still have good light for seven, seven years. years. Don't be, worry, yeah. everybody. <laughs> but think about yeah. those eight minutes. Think about those eight minutes, right? When the sun burns out, and yeah. then there's eight minutes where everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. and you just listen to Carly Simon. Yeah, Is it? Like, you don't know great. what you got till it's gone, and then it just <laughs> fades out. That'll, so, that's scary. So Alpha Dog. Yeah. So the guy he followed around this pack of wolves. And he noticed that there was this one wolf, a male wolf, that everyone deferred to. This is when he made up the theory. Right. Yeah. And so then he wrote this book, and I think the book is called Alpha Dog. The <laughs> next year, when he went back to study the same wolf pack, he figured it out that it wasn't, they're not just unrelated individuals, that that was the dad. So it was a family structure. And it's not a social structure. And there is no social alpha dog in a wolf pack. It's always familial. And oftentimes oh, wow. it's a female. Um, and so like he then what? wrote, he I'm then just wrote, like you see he my then wrote another book. Uh, uh-huh. And then just no like, one read it. No one read it. People were like, Alpha Dog. We, they, Alpha Dog took off. Like he was on TV shows immediately. Yes. People were like, yes, we, this Alpha Dog thing, we're behind. And then he came out the next year, one year later, and was like, guys, it's wrong. It's wrong. Alpha Dog's not a thing. And people were like, fuck off. It's a thing. The man who made Alpha Dog. <laughs> and it's been like his. Like they the, mute his mic. He's going, <laughs> Thank you so much. The guy who told us the true thing. <laughs> That justifies you getting beat up by yes. the quarterback. And being an asshole of a boss because you have to be like a wolf for some reason. Chim Chiminer. He's my screaming, name's not Chim. I didn't do it. I didn't they do it. They fade the mic up just for him to say, My name's not Chim. It's Jim. It's Chim Chiminer. My whole life I've been called Chim. Uh, isn't that fascinating? It is fascinating. But immediately I go to, can we get a structure of wolves that aren't related and see what happens? I don't know. Let's Third go book. get them. Let's Third go book. get them. <laughs> First one's called Alpha Dog. Second one's called Whoops, No Alpha. Third, <laughs> Double Whoops, should have found a group of non-related dogs. No, because- third one's called Getting These Dogs Together. <laughs> yeah. Who, who indeed let the dogs yeah. down? I'd like to know. That guy devoted his life to knowing who let the dogs out. Yeah, for real. Because who led them? Who led the dogs out? What about a, a flock? Of, oh, no, geese are always flopping. There's they're a leader flopping? and then they're like, Ooh. now, where are the Like leader? a peloton? Like a what? Is that in biking terms, right? Flopping? There's like, uh, they all line up and then they switch leader position oh. to draft everybody. And I think that's what geese do too. Oh, we got it from the geese. Yeah. I also found out that when we get goose down, it's a horrible, brutal process. No. Yeah. Do they do because it alive while Jason they Jason Alexander, <laughs> we were talking, yeah, when he did, we were talking about it and somebody from PETA emailed me and was like, look, I'm not trying to bum you out, but just because you asked, which I get a lot of emails like yeah, that. Yeah, You're yeah. a pod man. Yeah. They're actually really helpful. Yeah. We also, here's another one I got recently. That's a brutal and horrible process. No surprise there. Yeah. I don't know who I was thinking it's some like king being like, a oh, one feather. <laughs> or them <laughs> shaking them off for the person. That's ideal. Into a coat. 
And they fall they in the shape by. of the coat and they're like, extra large. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's horrible. The other one was we don't leave uh, fighter jets running all day. Some, have you heard that? It's, I guess it's an urban myth. No, I've because never somebody heard that. in the Air Force was like, "That's not true." Please tell people that's not true, because it was one of those things about like how grotesque and hyper masculine the military is uh -huh. that they don't want the to waste the three seconds to fire. Uh -huh. Let's say it's five minutes, or it might be ninety seconds right. to fire up a fighter jet, so they just leave it running all day. <laughs> and I was like, "That is like the most America." Amer <laughs> this is uh, America's funniest home videos, by the way. America. <laughs> This is you. Is that actually the song they use now? You don't remember that? This no, that's from you? the 90s. That's from the 90s. Stories oh. from your friends next door. <laughs> they never told you might be a star tonight. So let that camera roll. You're red, white, and blue. All the funny things you do. America, I really thought you might join me. No, this is I you. I don't know it at all. You didn't watch America's Funny Song videos? I did. I don't think I watched the credits. I don't think I watched the opening open. credits. You had them on mute. <laughs> yeah, but they had. It would just. It would just. They come had on killer clips through. in the intro. There's guys. It's what you tuned in for. There's a guy falling on a banana peel. Wait. Who would have? Who would have guessed that America's Funniest Home Videos that that would just be the future of the internet? Like that. That, that, that would, is what we're that doing. That is the internet. That is exactly what. Everything that is. was le here. Here's one one billionth of the internet. Yeah. And if you had told Little Pete and Little Kurt in the future that one video that you really liked for some reason, it's filled with imagery you don't even understand psychologically yeah. why you love it. <laughs> a guy in an old wig, like a like a judge's parliament wig, falling off a diving board into an empty pool. If you like that, you can find thousands of that. It's the, All the time. It's like. Porn. We did a monologue on the. This is the old Peter Holmes show backdrop. Oh, is it about how oh, like nice. if you liked big asses, <laughs> like for most of human history, you were just out of luck. You were just like <laughs> there were just there were only like seventy people in your little it's tribe, so, yeah. and you'd just be like, no, not not a not a pumpkin amongst them. <laughs> and now you can uh, you know find a big ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> I'm going to be coughing. My speaking of babies, my baby keeps bringing home a fresh a fresh cold. For oh us. yeah! As soon as we're Isn't over, it beautiful. She brings us home a new one. It's beautiful. It's just non non. Is it for you as well? Oh yeah, it's <clears throat> been Lauren. Five straight years. Constant colds. Constant colds. I think at this. I mean, like, yeah. I I'm luckily in between. That's you know? all. That's the best you could hope for. That's the best you could hope and for. And I just, I just was uh, shooting something, and I wanted to be like, I'm in, I'm in a, a avalanche of mucus. Like, yeah. not even times. literally. It's just how I feel. Mm -hmm. I feel like slimed and slow. Mm -hmm. And today, this energy you're getting today is like me starting to come out of it. Oh, nice. Even knowing I'm 11 days away, away from, from a the sneeze, next one, right in my face, yeah. and I'm back in it. Why, it's, why? it's fascinating how often they get sneezes <laughs> to the back of your throat. Oh, that's yeah. how that's fascinating to me. I was like, it's so perfect. It's like not intentional, but perfectly aimed right to the back of my throat. And sometimes Tonsils. I'll, I'll pick Leela up and I'll see a kid sneeze in her face. And I'm just like, this is <laughs> this is how it happens. Yeah. My daughter also Wolverine someone who took her marker the other day and she just <gasps> splashed their yeah. face. Have you experienced the weird feeling of like, first of all, obviously, 99.9%, that's horrible. We have yeah. to talk about that. And then you're kind of like, you can't help but side with your kid. Does yeah. that make sense? I, I'm even hesitant to say this. I don't want to publicly, there's no part of me that is glad that happened. Of we course. talked to her about it. Yeah. It can't happen again. We we cut her nails too. And <laughs> then like, let's yeah. let's remove the uh, the X factor she out of the equation. She now wears mittens. She now wears mittens, <laughs> Mike Birbiglia sleeping bag style. <laughs> But I constantly, like, no matter what Leela does, I'll side with her. I, have you experienced this phenomenon? I almost, I think I go uh, not well to the other side of it, where I'm, like, too quick to be like, don't you even, I can't believe you, you know? <clears throat> really? I do it, like, almost unconsciously, and then I have to pull myself back. You're that, that's the style dad you're. Yeah. Because, by just, the way, neither of these are right. I'm no. just saying I happen exactly. to be the dad that, like, Val will go, you can't even see Leela's behavior. Yeah. I just see 
a perfect beam of heaven's light. Yeah. No matter what she's doing. So if she slashes a face, I'm like, that's what the Lord decreed today. I don't like know. Yeah, I think I do. That's what the, this is what this, that kid deserved. This is how life is. And that boy <laughs> needed to learn. He needed a lesson. And the Lord's hand came down in my daughter's head to teach him that lesson today. And she doesn't. I go, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> thus, thus scratcheth the Lord is what I say. I don't know. I feel more... Uh, I think it's embarrassment. That's what it is. That I immediately feel like deeply embarrassed. That, that it reflects on you? Or? Yeah, that it reflects on. And it doesn't. It does not reflect on me. It's a I child acting. I would go acting. and say it does sort of. It does sort of, but it shouldn't because, right? Oh, no. Exactly. In fact, every almost everything we're, we're going to be saying today, it's not how it should be. Yeah. But like sometimes you do catch yourself like you. there's the kid that like hucks a spear and kills a cat and you're right. like... Yeah, it's probably something at home. I Even do. though it's totally not. I know, it, but is it? But you don't but know. You don't know. That's a thing. See, you just did it. You I don't was know, like, are they but hucking spears? Are they letting the kid yeah. kill the chicken for dinner? We had kids. We had like we had like a rash of like older boys that my, my that my daughter that was. That is what a group of older boys is called, by the way. A rash. A rash. Hell yeah. A murder of crows, a rash of boys. <laughs> <laughs> Who always were just like, she just looked up to them. And they're bullies, you know? And Rough. it was- How old is she now? She's five now, five and a half. And luckily she's out of that in a situation that has that. And The rash. Uh, the rash, there's no rash. There's rashes around, but she's part of a- Yeah, there's poxes. Yeah. There's rashes. Um, she's part of a crew now that I think is she's happy with. But, um, and it was, I it always like would go back to in my head just being like, those parents are probably fucked up. <laughs> Buddy, well, it's because you know, honestly, there's a there's a good way to do it. There's a there's it's, it's so close to a good way to do it. Meaning, if someone cuts you off in traffic, you can walk it back and be like, there's a way that they're not really culpable. Like no one's uh, really right. guilty of anything, which isn't really satisfying at all. At all. We hate this. Yeah. Our whole society is built on like that's not true. Mm. But there is a way to find compassion where you're like, I, I, I think it was Rupert Spiro was like, your parents are behaving exactly as people would act if they had the parents they had. Right. And that opens up compassion. You just go like, in the same, but we don't like it. We'd rather be like, yeah, well, snap out of it. <laughs> you know, like snap out of it and make a new way. Have you noticed yourself, because I've noticed this in myself, that you've become more <laughs> empathetic towards adults' bad behavior because of your children like in a level the, of tiredness for sure yeah or yeah just being like if someone cuts you off just being like looks like somebody maybe didn't have a snack today or like that looks like somebody didn't sleep well last night because it's like my bed every it's the yeah. same needs it's the same needs and when my kids are acting like assholes i'm like why are they acting like assholes i was like they didn't sleep last night yep. or they're hungry and the worst thing about uh, not the worst thing, but like a bad thing about kids is that they can't tell you. Yeah. And you know what? My parents are the same way. I don't think my parents know what dehydrated feels like. Right. I'd, I'd say that to their face. <laughs> and I think I was like that until I had kids where if I was hungry, yeah. I would just be an asshole. Yes. And like my and wife would like, just be is, like, fucking eat. Yeah. Fucking eat something. Yes. You're a piece of shit right now yes. that I eat and be like, oh, I'm sorry. My <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. parents are reverse gremlins. You have to feed them after midnight. Like you have to constantly <laughs> feed them. And my, they visited recently. They don't turn into monsters if you feed them after midnight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they sh my mom came. It was one o'clock, Kurt. These motherfuckers have been up since six. Ooh. It's 1 p.m. Yeah. First thing my dad's, I, I, and when they left the day before, I was like, dad, make sure mom eats, make sure mom eats. Cause it's a, it's, it's just off the rails bad yeah. when, when, when no one eats. First thing he says is she hasn't eaten. And I, I, I like another internet meme, I just went, you had one job <laughs> because it was just like you brought, I don't know what else. It's like you gave a, like a, a, a shark that's been given blood. Like yeah. it's like a terrible, terrible situation. Eat. Yeah, Coke. or you have to just, you, it's like almost that you have to just travel with like knishes at all times and just like give them Honestly, to them. Honestly, yeah. which is what I do as a parent. <laughs> yeah. Which is what I have to do with my parents. Yeah, your exactly. Parent, your parent, your parents. Parent, parent. One thing's become a parent. <laughs> if you're a parent, you still have to parent your parents. Your parent, your parents. And now you're, I'm actually dealing with one, two, three, four bladders. My own, my parents, <laughs> and, my, and my daughter's. 
So, okay, you just did this. You were telling me about the structure. It's on, is it on moment currently? Yes, so it's on moment right now. It'll is be there it doing well? November 16th. I know that's kind I of I don't a, know. I don't yeah. know yet. Okay. Um, the response has been really great. Yes, you know? I saw the New York Times thing, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, I've been trying to get a, the New York Times to review anything I've done for 15 years, and it was finally like, oh, that's so nice. I used to be nice. so nice. I thought they reviewed everything. I know, me I too. I put my book out, and I was like, I can't wait to see the New York Times book review. And yeah. it's like, that's a huge piece of publicity. Yeah. Even if it's an eh review, it's yeah. still... Millions of people will see yeah. it. Like you don't, you don't just get that. Someone vied for that yeah. review, uh, um, so they reviewed it, which is awesome. Which is awesome. That's cool. And so I have no idea. And then <clears throat> I'm only asking. I wasn't sniffing around your butt. It's more like, should I do this? Like I'm about to do a special. I think what's nice about it is that it allows a way to just get it directly to fans. You know, they don't have to pay for any other services. <clears throat> they don't have to be a member of anything. Quick cue: Why not do Louis C.K. Complications noted. Mm -hmm. uh, why not do just put it on your website? Uh, yeah, that is like the what's nice about Moment is that you can do like bundles of like meet and greets and after parties that they facilitate with their software. And so it's like <coughs> with the everybody watches it at a specific time. Oh. So having the specific time as the premiere, you get like just a big spike in ticket sales for everyone to watch it kind of together. Oh. And then you're there and then you do like kind of a, a, an after party that's online as well. Uh, that's fun. Yeah, so that's the reason I think for moment as opposed to just also, on a did, website. Did they pay for the production of it? Uh, there was eight hundred pound gorilla, the they production company. It. Yeah, it was eight hundred pound the money. and Point Grey. And Point Grey were the pr production company. But that means they fronted the money. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it's expensive to shoot a special. Yeah. The I mean, reason like, all this inside baseball is I'm like now it, it used to be you'd get a fee and they'd and they'd make it. Yeah. And now it's like they'll give you a fee and you have to make mm -hmm. it. And the fee covers making, making it. it. And then you're like, well, I guess I don't have to be wearing clothes and I don't have to be lit. <laughs> and then I can go home with $600. Just a candle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. These used to be sweet little paydays. They did. And now uh, just, it seems just like, like four or five years four ago. Four or five years ago. What Everything. It, it Like, remember, it's like Chappelle and yeah. and and the Mulaney's all sort of skin the goose. But we skinned it once. Yeah. That's what's weird is that, like, why can't the goose grow some more skin? Yes. To be skinned Shouldn't again. It, did it not work? Is did it not skinning bring Skinning the it? goose a term? Skin isn't, it's not, it's supposed to be shave the sheep. Yeah, shear the sheep. They they slaughtered the sheep instead of shearing the <laughs> yeah, sheep. Yeah, the sheep is dead. The sheep's long <laughs> dead, and Chappelle's and we've running already, and away. Chappelle has the coat. They gave <laughs> yes, he's wearing the thirty million dollar coat. The thirty I don't, million dollar. But I mean, coat. remember? Yes, of course you do. When streamings came out, it was like everybody's getting five Who wants million a special? dollars. Who wants a it special? Was, yeah. It was like um, super deluxe. Remember mm -hmm. super deluxe? Of course I do. But both iterations when. I don't remember two iterations of Super Deluxe. Oh my God! There was the 2005 iteration of Super Deluxe when I, Kristen and I made I Penelope, Princess of Pets, and, and then they Eugene came Merman. back. They came back. They came back in like 2015 or 2016 or something, That's and they were super around deluxe. for like four years and then closed again. I just have to say, and I'd love for you to weigh in on this. Uh, Having done show business, having done been in show business for twenty years, <laughs> having done show business yeah. with nougat, uh, I've noticed that if something flares up really bright, it could be a club, uh -huh. it could be a channel, it's going away, it, and it's giving everyone yeah. great treatment. And everybody loves it. You get ten thousand dollars just to take the meeting. Yeah. Like, Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget your ten thousand dollar gift bag. That thing is fucking gone. gone. It's, it's like gone. a beautiful unicorn so, that isn't in. long for the world. Get, get in, in early. Run in now. It's and like leave. It's like the Maui Comedy Festival. Was that a thing? It was a king for one year. It was amazing. I bet it was. They took us snorkeling. We went out on a, a sailboat. We did shows. We stayed at a beautiful hotel. Of and then it- brr, It's brr, gone. It's gone. completely gone. It's also uh, comics, which we both worked yeah. in, in New York. Yes, I comics remember was comics so was great. like, you get one entree, one appetizer. And, and as many and drinks as drink. you want. And I was like- As many drinks as like top show. And yeah, I was like, we yeah. were all like 28. Yes. We just be like, <laughs> yes. now I'm going to do my yes. chow. <laughs> and then you go to the club that's been open for 50 years and they're like, you get half off tonic water. <laughs> And you're like, what? <laughs> but you realize there's a certain <laughs> degree you have to treat us like the animals we yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. We but will destroy we, it. Could we have taken that 30 mil that Chappelle got and just and just saved five of those mil? Five mil. That would be 
I can't do the math. I'm not here to do math. I'm here to have fun with you. But I'm going to say it takes seven years for light to reach the earth from the sun. I'm going to say at least 700 specials can come yes, from that five mil. Right? And we would all, Ugh. like the old days, like the, like the, you know, like the 30 grand, 50 grand yeah. specials. And you're still like, that's a, that's a that's teacher's salary exactly. in a day and everybody's happy. And now it's like, no, you, you can, you, you will host it. Yeah. But that's just, that's just <laughs> space on your server. I will can host, host it, it on my computer too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, I'm hosting it. <laughs> I'm doing the bits. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad this exists because there needs to uh, there a needs new to be way. a new way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just there for a limited amount of time. Then it'll go TV on de- TV on demand, and then eventually it'll end up on YouTube. Yeah, so that people will actually see it, which is so different from you know, like my that hour that you watch on Paramount Plus. It just recently became stop available. <laughs> stop, stop bringing that up. The hour that you wrongly watch. <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> No, when it came out in 2017, it aired <laughs> at midnight. You also talked about the movie uh, Avalanche. Everest. Everest. I talked and I'm about like, the movie Everest, what? and that was old then. And it was old then, and the joke was that it was old, and I was like, <laughs> I don't remember the movie Everest. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about the gray. I mean, he didn't talk about the gray. But People get so upset about that joke online. The Everest? The Everest joke. They get so mad. And then, and this was the thing. They always call me a... Uh, they're like, oh, soy boy. And I was like, I didn't even know soy boy was still an insult. And then low T, this guy's low T, because I don't, because I think it's stupid for people to climb Can Everest. We, okay, let's go with that premise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've been thinking about this a lot. Mm. Testosterone, okay, we are our hormones. I'm right. going to keep this real quick. Poor Katie hears me say we are our hormones <laughs> all the time. We are basically a block of tofu, mm-hmm. and our hormones pass through this. Yes. And, and we respond accordingly. And- If you have low T, and they're right, climbing a mountain makes less sense. It's true. (laughs) That is facts. Yeah. If you have high T, now we're just talking about a higher concentration of a hormone passing through your central (laughs) nervous system, climbing a mountain makes sense. Yeah. Can't we just agree then that our hormones low or high, are just kind of making us insane. Like, you do this a lot, yeah. increases testosterone, you're more likely to fight someone because you have higher testosterone. Yeah. You, isn't that, like, meaning you're more aggressive. Yeah. I've talked about this ad nauseum. I'm going to put it back to you. It's like, I started lifting weights for the first time in my life. I'm 43 years old. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't believe people aren't talking about this. I started lifting weights, and, the, and I'm talking about, like, Two weeks of consistent weight training in, I noticed my personality was fundamentally different. Really? Fundamentally different. Meaning that's how little testosterone maybe I had before. I don't Uh know if I was low T. Every time I went to the doctor, they were like, it's in the normal range. So it wasn't low, but now I'm spiking it and I'm getting all this like blood flow and Uh testosterone. And like in the car, way less patient. Uh, oh, I, I noticed myself getting angry way faster. And I understand people are saying perhaps, or thinking perhaps that's a placebo. I don't know if there's a more highly, a finely tuned instrument for noticing how I feel and what's different than uh-huh. myself. Meaning that happens to be one of my greatest passions. Mm-hmm. As a standup, that's where it kind of started. It's like, I had a great show. I had dinner 90 minutes before. Like I've always looked at my own life as a science experiment. So there so were no I. other- So have I. Right? Yeah. Well, just like, I, yeah, people always call, like Scotty, my co-host on Bananas, and always calls me like a, like the old, the old, the old science kit. Cause yeah. I'm just like, I will have two shots of espresso at this time before my show here yes. and then I will eat after. Yeah, like And I it's always want to know bro- what other people's things yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody was taking a, a B12 before their show and I was like, what's that? Baraka, that's what I'm into. What's Baraka? Baraka's from I Australia. I know Baraka is, but <laughs> what is he hawking now other than... <laughs> B-Raka, B-E-R-O... CCA, it's fucking awesome. Okay. It's a vitamin B, it's a, it's a fizzy thing. You drop it in vitamin B, a little bit of caffeine, a little bit of guaraná. And it is... Okay, the shit. Yeah. Are you feeling that magic mind at all? Are you feeling yes, any happy feeling? I am. Right? 100%. Okay, one for one. I, I Katie, will you write that down and, and remind me? Yeah. Baraka from Mortal Kombat yeah. 2. He wasn't in one. Anyone I, going around saying he was in one? I'm just kidding. I'm just, I, like, that's, that was just absolute nothing. 
We found absolute nothing. <laughs> uh, you're a science experiment. Yes. And have you, because I, I remember you, you, you are why I intermittent fast. I still do. I've, oh, yeah. I've intermittent fasted for coming up I'm, six years I because just, you yeah. told me at Kumail's house, you looked great. I guess this is now you. This is the you I've saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a softer Kurt, I think, because yeah. I, I saw you and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah and yeah. I consider you another me out yeah. there, like yeah. tall, white, comedian, similar. We get ready, all that yep. stuff. And I was like, well, then I'll just do that. Um, so is that is that still happening? And also, what are the other experiments you're running on? Yourself? I had not been doing that, but then um, just like general laziness. And then I have the Tonight Show in two days. So I was just oh, like, I want to drop it. a couple pounds before I do the Tonight Show. And so I just started doing <laughs> it again. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, that's you really feel it then. Which when you like, the, w- the like if you like fast for twenty four hours, and then you're just like, well, now I will have this avocado, and then you're just like, avocado power. I it's so weird. Completely agree. I, I, I'm embarrassed that I brought it up. If, if Val were here, she would be like, oh boy, it's one of my topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't get me started. Don't get me started on cold exposure or fasting. But really, it's not even about meaning the way it makes you look is mm. is lower on the list for me it gets you incredibly high. In fact, everything that I'm into yeah. is about getting really, really high. Do you still use those uh, nicotine uh, toothpicks? That was, a, that was a long, that was a, probably a two-year experiment yeah. with nicotine. Ha- really glad you brought that up. Loved nicotine, but re- recognized what addiction is. That, that, that actually yeah. helped me learn what addiction is, and it's actually way worse nicotine. than I thought it was. Nicotine is, it is like... It's the top one. I mean, like Doug Stanhope has a bit about it where he had, and it's in, I think it's in his special beer hall putch, but he talks about like his neighbor who he lived next to was a boxer who had been like just beat in the head so many times that he was like, just like had so much brain damage. But then as soon as they, he came over to watch a show or something, and as soon as Doug lit a cigarette up, he's like, oh. Oh, oh! Like the nicotine thing just wraps itself around the like. Oh, meaning the stem, that remained. Uh, that remained the desire to have a cigarette like that's after the last everything thing to was be gone. damaged. Yes, but it's yeah. so crazy. But this is what's important. This is what was important for me. Yeah. I can't know other people's experience. I, j- I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> Guy who takes things way too seriously. I just can't know. <laughs> I can't know. All right. And if you want me to know, I don't. I can't help you. Okay. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going for. Um, I thought addiction meant this shit is awesome. Uh huh. Like, of course you want more nicotine. It makes you feel incredible. Right. And nicotine does tick a lot of the boxes that, that old Holmesy is looking for. Me too. Energy, mm-hmm. uh, mood elevation, and it's a nootropic, meaning yeah. it helps you think. So it helps with creativity. So uh, I'm not even going to refute that. That's true. Yeah. Um, what's also true is addiction isn't just this is awesome, so of course I want more of it. It's actually there's there's these little receptors in your brain that we all have, and when you take nicotine, heroin, caffeine, mm-hmm. anything that's addictive, sugar, anything, and, and we're dealing with a lot of them, but some of them are like 10 out of 10 on the addictive scale, yeah. and nicotine's like that. So there's a nicotine receptor in your brain you give it nicotine, it just grows another one. Yeah. That's what it does. So this is Ryan Adams, uh, uh, conflict uh, noted. Okay. But like Ryan Adams, uh, it takes two when it used to take one. That's literally scientifically true, meaning the receptors start to double, uh-huh. quadruple, triple. Now your brain is, re- this is what disturbed me and made me quit. Your brain is rearranging itself to uh, priority, prioritize the acquisition of nicotine over other behaviors. Wow. So it, you literally become enslaved yeah. or programmed or hypnotized or puppeted. Yeah. I think maybe puppeted is the puppeted. best word. And you're like, I've actually lost agency mm-hmm. under the guise of this shit's awesome. Yeah. And that is so, when, once I understood that and I was like, well, now I need to starve these, rece- and that's the good news, you starve them, they die. Yeah. They, these receptors die and that's what, detox is that's what withdrawal is yeah and i watched nikki glazer talking about quitting smoking and uh she said something like after day three it's about the same level as of discomfort as mild hunger which i found to be true oh interesting. and, and so i completely got off it but i did go through a a nicotine i'm gonna say it patch <laughs> <laughs> no. did you were you on that train oh i started smoking when i was 10 10 years old <laughs> 
10 or when you had reached your peak handsomeness. Old. <laughs> when I became a 10, I started. So <laughs> you smoked a sneaky butt when you were 10? Yeah, we, we got. Who gave it to you? We got Newports. We did. We got them ourselves. We, what do you mean? So it was me and my friend Francis and his buddy. I can't remember his buddy's name. And so we, it was like the local corner store, which was called the Cracker Barrel. Still exists, but it's not a Cracker Barrel. It's called the Cracker Barrel. So I was always confused when people were like, we're going to Cracker Barrel. I was like, Cracker Barrel is in Sugar Hills, New Jersey. <laughs> and it's just a one, it's just one place. You can't do that. You can't be like, this is the ground round. <laughs> I know, right? Pharmacy. Jersey, they're like, we don't give a shit. This is the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> it's like naming a deli McDonald's. It is. Yeah. Yes. So, he, so he, we sent him because he didn't live in our town, and we went to the Cracker Barrel every day. So we sent him in to buy, and he bought Newports. And How old is he? He was, Francis and him were 12, and I was 10. And then we waited at Francis' house, and then he called us from the payphone and said, uh, the pita bread is in the hole. And we replied with, uh, the fox is on its way. <laughs> oh, and then my we left. God. And then we left Francis' house and went into the woods across the street from his house. And we all smoked one cigarette and then put you it in. You want to do it surrounded by dry leaves. That's exactly. where you want to do it. Of course. And where else are you going to smoke in New Jersey other than the woods? And it was also like woods in a wetland. So there was like wetlands there okay. too. And uh, then we put it into a plastic. Ziploc bag and dug a hole and buried it in the woods. Porno style. Exactly, porno style. And then would just come back every weekend. And I think it was like two weeks later when they came back and they were like, guess what? We were at Belmar Playland and we found out you're supposed to inhale. And we're like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, no way. No way you're supposed to inhale it. Yeah. And they're like, and this is how you take a little bit in your <coughs> mouth and then you go. <sighs> And you bring in a lot of air too. And I was like, that seems crazy. And they're like, try it. And I like did it. And I was like, now how old? Oh. <laughs> now I get it. And I fell into like a bush. And I just remember sitting, looking up at the sky. And then a helicopter <laughs> went over. And I was like, there's my mom. She's looking for me. She knows I'm smoking cigarettes. Is that, oh my God. That was God. like my first thought because I was like paranoid. But you got. First of all, you're reminding me, I, I had a friend in high school that smoked, and she also, for the first year of smoking, didn't know you're supposed to inhale. Yeah. So you're smoking them like little cigarettes. Yeah, just like... Uh, like cigars, I mean. Yeah. Which you still... It always bothers me that John Leguizamo is smoking a cigar in Romeo and Juliet, one of those little cigars, and he's doing that. A cigarillo? It doesn't look cool. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, it doesn't look cow. It doesn't yeah. look cool. No. You're supposed to inhale it, let it trickle out your nose like a dragon. <laughs> like, that's cool. Like a dragon. Or let it, let it come out as you're talking. Like, yeah. But what are you fucking what are you talking, talking about? It's coming it's out. Like, you yeah. literally look like a mythological beast. We used beast. to do the thing of, like, put it just into your mouth and then push it out and then inhale it through your nose. And if you could do that, you were very cool. Oh, as the, a 10 year old. The, the little whoop. Yeah, the whoop. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. French exhale. Yeah, the French exhale, yeah. Yeah, they do that in Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is where I saw there all my is. good smoking moves. This brings us back, obviously, we're still on nicotine. I still don't understand. I, I just had this conversation. I, I have to tell myself to stop doing this, mm -hmm. telling people what to do, I mean. But a friend of mine was like, oh, they're going through a divorce, and now they're smoking a lot. And I was like, have you tried nicotine gum? Like, just get the nicotine. Yeah. The carbon monoxide will get you lightheaded. Like, inhaling yeah. smoke kind of gives you a different kind of high in the same way that huffing gasoline will. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just trim that out. <laughs> the fucking tobacco people said it themselves. Remember the trials when we were in the 90s? Yeah. When, we were kids? They were like, when they made Altria. Altria? Yeah, they stopped being Philip Morris, and they're like, now we're called Altria. How dare they call themselves something altruism? I know, Altria. That's crazy. I think they're still called Altria now. Whoa. Yeah. That's insane. Isn't that insane? But they, Altria, I guess. They just changed the name and they're like, where, we, what, what, who? Yeah. Who are you coming after? Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. Altria. <laughs> we, yes, we do make Marlboro still. <laughs> Hello, Altria. <laughs> Hello, Altria. <laughs> no William Morris here. <laughs> Old Bill Morris. <laughs> Al Trua is here. <laughs> but uh, they said in those hearings that, that cigarettes were just a nicotine delivery system. So, like, take it from them. Yeah. They have the science. What you want is nicotine. So just do nicotine. But the problem is people take nicotine gum and they chew it like a piece of bubblicious and it'll make you sick. Yeah. You got to bite it once or twice and then park it. Like, and then park uh, it. Like park snuff. it like dip. Like yeah. dip, basically. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, but as I'm saying this to people, you realize that there are so many unconscious desires at play 
one of which is to kill yourself. Like, I, I'm not trying to be dark. People like doing things that are destructive. There's mm -hmm. an appeal to, there's a big red button that says, do not touch yeah. or you'll die. And we like to lick the button. We like to rub our ass <laughs> on it. Like, and it looks cool. Yeah. We, I mean, I, I'm not the first one to make this point, but like, I'm so practical and a science experiment that I'm like, just go to the finish line and, and get the chemical that yeah, you yeah. like. But really people want to, it's fun to be sad and smoking too. The, what I actually miss most about smoking is um, being somewhere and going outside with one other person and having five to eight minutes yep. of alone time outside. You're stealing a, 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 a bit. I think we did this on the Beat Home Show. It's like, I don't like smoking. I like leaving bars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I love it. I said, love if there it. was a cup of tea that if you ordered it, you had to drink you it had to outside. You drink it outside. That's so great. I would be like, I would love that tea. That would I would be, constantly. I it's would, just like highly sensitive, introverted people, yeah. which by the way, are more uh, prone to smoke, I believe. Interesting. Be, uh, somebody told me that the fundamental core negative belief of a smoker is I am a, I'm alone. Ooh. And it is. And and how they it bonds you with other ones is yeah. like the remedy. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Right, because it's not everybody who goes out for the smoke. It's just the two. It's just the two. Yeah. And also it'll get you lots of sex, which I always, not lots of sex. I'm just saying that's how people are meeting each other. Yeah, exactly. Leave the bar. It's so funny, too, of like... Uh, of that cigarette that you share with a person and then you, then you go to kiss them and then it's just like cigarette mouth. <laughs> two cigarette, two <laughs> yeah, ashtrays. Two, two ashtrays kissing. It's like both of you have the uh, garlic with clams. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter. But also, I was just, I have a bit about this too where it's like in junior high school, I drank my soda and then a girl asked me for a sip of soda. She drinks the soda. By the transit of property, we've now kissed. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the same... Like, Things don't change. Grown-ups oh, right, just have different cigarette. things. I take oh, a like, drag, yeah. you take a drag. Or or if a woman takes a cigarette from you and does it, yeah. she's saying, like, we're still, like, Jane Goodall should still be studying us. <laughs> just around the corner. Just going like, ah. <laughs> to demonstrate that I don't think cooties, I don't think your germs are a threat to me. Yeah. Meaning I think genetically... We are simpatico, mm -hmm. meaning like what your immune system right. can fight off, mine can fight <laughs> off. Meaning, what does that mean? We could have children. <laughs> when I take your cigarette and take a puff from it, it's saying I could have your children. <laughs> <laughs> What's great is 0% kidding. <laughs> No, I know. Yeah, I get it. I get There's it. Those cues. There's yeah, yeah, those yeah. cues. Of course. Do you love the way that Lauren smells? Um, yes, I do. Did it change after she had the baby? Oh, I don't know. Probably not then. Okay. Because that's a phenomenon I was Are you aware of, of it? nervous of. Yeah. Oh, it didn't happen. Oh, okay. I'm obsessed with how Val smells. So I and this is sort of this is a little weird because now by the transitive property, I'm saying I'm obsessed with how I smell. But Val smells very similar to me. She smells oh, interesting. familiar to me. That's then you but, notice that immediately? I noticed it after we started sleeping together, but I was I was sort of like, oh wow, this this person's doesn't because what 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 am I really saying? They don't smell to me, right? Like smell means unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. Like if you're like, what's that smell? Mm -hmm. I mean, like I'm not used to this. Even though you and I are, are essentially, you're kind of like saturated in smells that are normal to yeah. you. So Val doesn't smell, but there is a phenomenon. And this is good fodder for your podcast. Not really. It's not like a news. Story. We did. We did. There is a news story Whoa. that I was going to tell you about tell for me. bananas. Weird that I picked uh, up friends. On that. Friends choose Psychic. friend circles based on smell. Not surprised. Yeah. Not surprised. We at all. did it a little while ago, right? Yeah. Friends choose the friends that to be in their, their circle, circle based on pheromones. Yeah. I think there's a lot of information going on. If someone tastes repulsive to you, very hard to get over. I that was I had a girlfriend who I dated for two years. The very first time we ever hooked up, I was like, I don't like the way that she tastes. Yeah. And but then we still dated, and it was the most damaging yep. relationship I've ever been in. I wonder how they felt about you. I wonder as well. Because if, if she was bad to you, I bet you were bad to her. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've said it a million, poor Katie, poor everybody, poor me. I mean, think of how many times I've heard it. But dating, if you date based on smell, yeah. like if you find your partner based on smell, and there's different ways of doing that, uh, one, just take a big old whiff. Uh, very good success rate. Yeah. And this is, I think this is disturbing to us. Oh, well, also- We, we want to have agency. We want to have free will. We do really want to have but free will. But really, it's like, yeah, sorry, sucker. You're like amoebas and your microbiome and your fucking- Are your running tofu, you. Your hormones. It you're just really like, is this true. It smells like- 
familiar. And yeah, I mean, like, I agree 100%. That whole idea of like whether or not we have agency is actually, I think, a big question. But the night that I met my wife, I knew that we were going to get married. And I said it to, I was with Eugene Merman and my friend Chris Oslett. On a super deluxe set. <laughs> on a super deluxe set. We're going, set. I don't think this is going to last. <laughs> but you know what will last? Me and that girl who's on a date right now with somebody else. <laughs> for real, for real? Yeah, she was on a date with somebody else Who? at the time. Todd Barry. <laughs> no. Well, you, she, she claims it wasn't you, a date. She claims it wasn't a date. shut the fuck up. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. You was on a, so uh, you like breadsticks? <laughs> and then she, in comes. <laughs> I claim it was a date. She says it wasn't a date. They were just buddies going to a show together. Uh, and I was like, Zero okay. chance. <laughs> <laughs> the ruling, the ruling has been handed down. I'm not saying Todd's skeezy or anything. No, I'm just saying all. Lauren is a beautiful woman. Yeah. Todd is, is a single uh, guy. And uh, there's no way he was like, right. I'm going on a friend date. But she was literally like getting in a car, leaving with Todd. And I had like seen her at the bar for like five minutes and had like a very short conversation with her earlier. Uh, and then I was like, there it is. There she goes, pretty drunk. There she goes, girl, I'm gonna marry, marry her. And like Chris was like, okay. All, all right, buddy. buddy. All right, get all in right. the car. <laughs> okay. And Eugene is going, stupendous. I don't, I don't know what I, I, He's just saying some Eugene word. Yeah. I, thought that was, I thought that was right. And I thought Katie was laughing and I looked at her and she wasn't, <laughs> which is okay. No, I thought I saw you go like a big laugh, but I think it was over by the time I got to you. <laughs> this is not even worth mentioning, but it's funny to just look at a neutral face and be like, stupendous. <laughs> you do not have to perform for us, Katie. Please be comfortable. <laughs> um, she is after seven thousand episodes. Yeah, she's doing just fine. Has it um, been ten years? More it's than been ten over years. ten years. Yeah. Wow. We're in the seven hundreds. Wait. Eleven, 11 years. years. Wow. What? So here's what I love about your story. Mm -hmm. You talked to her. Yeah. Which means you smelled her. Yeah. It happened. Yeah, it happened. I tried for the longest time to get a, a joke about how our genitals smell like our armpits. Uh -huh. And so when two athletes, like boxers, are hugging each yeah, other, they're just like, smelling each other. They can dick. smell each other's dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all they're, they're getting so close. I've seen like I'm sure they smell each other's actual dicks as well. <laughs> <laughs> they're very close. If you're talking about wrestlers on the way down, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking about like fighters. I'm talking about wrestlers. Wrestlers are wrestlers definitely are smelling just getting dicks. A, they're getting the taint. Yeah, they, yeah, they're yeah. Like, they know the difference between the three regions, as they call it. <laughs> yes, they do. The balls, the, the taint, taint, and, and the yeah. Asshole. asshole. They're like, like it was dark, but where would the coach is like, where were you in the regions? <laughs> I do wonder if wrestlers who are like very serious about it just like don't shower for a couple days before matches so that they they make whatever is <laughs> happening dominate. to the other person like the most uncomfortable and thing. And also to just dominate, yeah, to, to dominate. smell dominant. Yeah. If you're showering and shampooing before a wrestling match, <laughs> I don't know anything other than the movie Foxcatcher about wrestling. <laughs> You're doing it absolutely wrong. In fact, what is a wrestling match except two smells battling for dominance? Which of these smells smell will be on Peter top? Is <laughs> I remember when we did, when Kristen and I did uh, the Melbourne Comedy Festival in 2008, uh, I wore a suit for every single show. And it was 28 shows in 30 days. I did not wash the suit. suit. And yeah. we did Chris and Charles a Horse at the end where I was just of like course. pouring sweat. And it was summertime, pouring sweat. Yes. Uh, that was the worst smell I've ever I heard uh, Sasha Bear Co. Yeah, for Borat. For Borat. You, uh, no, so you heard the same thing that Sasha Bear Co. didn't yeah. wash his suit. He never suits. Wears, washes his suit. Because he wouldn't. Right. Borat wouldn't. Immediately puts people also <laughs> in a on the back foot, I think. Well, isn't Borat and the way people treat Borat an extension? I'm feeling very lofty today. But I think it's yeah. an extension of how we deal with things like smell. Uncontrollable cultural differences mm -hmm. are sort of like uncontrollable smells, yes. like body smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're foreign smells. And there's, yes, and yes. they're foreign, and you don't know how are smells handled in your community. Right? It's like a big thing. Do you, okay, so I did this pilot. Uh, on uh, Katie vision? has heard me talk about this. Uh, it was poor Katie. <laughs> this was a pilot. In the end, we learn it was all Katie. <laughs> it was all. It Katie. was all for Katie. <laughs> Katie. It was Katie's chess pieces. Tell the story again, <laughs> again. Kurt. 
It was a pilot, I believe, for AMC back in 2002 like, two or something. And it was a, based on a British prank show that they were trying to bring to America. And there was a character that existed already in the UK and was successful. I played this character. It's called Mr. Stinks. They took a suit and they doused it in skunk and coyote urine and it and just like the most disgusting smells, like I as I put the suit on, I would start gagging. If the sketch doesn't end with one round bald man with glasses that goes, "Hello," <laughs> and like just immediately is, is, is drawn to you, that's how we need it. We need it. No, what it was, Mister was Stinks, Mister Stinks, and it was so upsetting. It was so upsetting, and I feel horrible for having participated in it. Uh, then women would set their friends up on blind dates with me. Is this the same one with the ventriloquist? Same show? Different show. <laughs> Drop the mic. Pete. You are the I'm cast- a monster. You know, but you are central casting's idea of this guy looks. Your equal parts won't prank me and yes. will prank yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like a perfect <laughs> Arnold Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> Of like of disgusting it's like, ambition. I could see him doing something <laughs> horrible, but I could also see someone not seeing something horrible from him coming. Yeah. That's you. He's either a math teacher or a pedophile. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yes, that's exactly right. So I would have to go on blind dates with these women. They would come and I would like immediately get up and hug them. And then they would sit down and it was just, the they, prank was just wait. waiting to see how long it took for them to leave. I'm... Full of death that you hugged them. Yeah. And did anyone, did it just end there? Nope. Everyone went with it. Everyone went with it. And that is the phenomenon. One woman out of five, I think one woman within like a minute was just like, you know, I have to go to the bathroom. And then she just never came back. And then the others were just like so very nice. And they didn't know they're on TV. They're just being nice. They they won the, wasn't there a prank show called Tipping Point or something? There was a, there was a prank boiling show, points. boiling point, yeah, yeah, where yeah. they would try to aggravate you, yeah, and if you t- made it to a yeah, certain point, you, you made can't money. Can't do that now. No, because people would pull out a gun and shoot somebody. That's absolutely right. Yeah. there's your boiling point. Right there's there. your boiling point. And then Could get we off. get people to pull a gun? <laughs> this is this is the new prank show. Can we get someone to pull a gun on us? That's crazy. That's fantastic. <laughs> Boy, you just made me think. Well, there was that Darren. Who's the magician guy? Darren. Oh. Um, Darren Par- Carter, the party starter. That's a comedian. Carter Darren. The party starter? Poor guy. He probably is so sick of being called Darren Carter, the party starter. Aaron uh, Carter, you mean? Is it Aaron Carter? Is Aaron, is Aaron Carter the Carter party starter? He's dead. He Who? just died. Aaron Carter? Yeah. Oh, the pop musician? Yeah. No, no, not no, no, no. Okay. Carter. Are you talking about Darren a magician? Carter, the and then there's another magician <laughs> who tried to make a person take a bullet for him, and he does it. It's a Netflix special. It's crazy. Whoa. With conditioning. Will you look up magician, atheist, skeptic, and I think it's Darren. Okay. He's like, his whole thing is disproving most things. And, and, and kind of what we've been talking about is like, we are reactive systems. And like, oh, can I get this guy who's a race? Darren Brown. Darren Brown. Very fascinating okay. guy. Doing work that like, he, like I'm going to be upset on his behalf. If he was doing what he's doing now and uh-huh. for the past 15 years in the 90s, he'd be Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> like, because <laughs> it's only a testament to there being too much content that I'm telling uh-huh. you that there's a special, a magic special where he takes a racist guy, has him go through a series of deprogramming exercises, one of which I remember is gazing with an illegal immigrant uh-huh. of Mexican descent. So they stare at each other's eyes and he's crying, like completely wow. cracking him open. And then using like suggestive sounds, like sound triggers uh-huh. that like trigger certain thoughts. It's too much. It takes an hour to explain in the show, and it works. At the end, they set up a situation where someone's going to shoot an illegal immigrant, and the guy dives in front of the bullet. What? <laughs> yeah. It's also you know what else is the other problem about about this special? I'm realizing in the retelling, there's a thing in magic where things can't be too amazing. Because uh-huh. there's there's a threshold. A threshold of belief. It, a mm-hmm. threshold actually of, I think, belief is, a, a, yeah. I might use the word acceptance. Okay. Or like, imagine if I just held my hand up like this and then like something appeared there. That's actually too amazing. Right. For that, you to even. Because I would be like, there has to be. I don't even know what you do. So, right. it, it's like the matrix. Like 
you wouldn't accept it, and I it wouldn't would break accept it. you. Like if you disappeared and the mic fell exactly. to the ground, not fun. Not but fun. But if I put because that scream, I start screaming. Exactly. That that's part of it. I throw all the cameras on the. But ground. think about it, what the best magic trick in the world is. The way the human animal works is we'd like there to be a crossroads, a, a, a hinge, mm -hmm. wherein something funky might happen, but we don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. But we don't just want to see magic. Yeah. If we did, we'd go see the Aurora Borealis. Am I right? I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, you'd like me to cover myself with a blanket, but and then I'm gone. That you right. love. That, yes. But if but I if just, you just vanish, disappeared, you'd it be would like, be like too much. It's it's like an assault. It's an assault. It would be terrifying. Yeah. I remember David Blaine showed up on the street once when we were outside of Always the Always on the street, that guy. Always on the street. <laughs> he did this thing, and I watched him do it. Fascinating. Took a coin, <laughs> took a quarter out of, I think it was my pocket or somebody else's pocket, and had our friend Ashley write her name on it with a Sharpie. Uh, then he put it in her hand, put his hands over her hand, and then when she opened it up, it was bent in half with her signature on it. Wow. I mean, I was just like, what? And you, and then he gave it to her. like So she had a yeah. bent quarter. A lot of overhead in being a magician. A lot of you overhead. You got to give away those props. You got to give them away. <laughs> and look, I'll talk about magic with you all day. The worst thing that I can say is that you, or not the worst thing, but you don't actually want to know. Having known True. a lot of uh, magicians and done a lot of study in magic. Yeah. You don't. You, it's always it's very disappointing. Upsetting. It's upsetting. It's like finding out that comedians are really just like highly sensitive, neurotic narcissists. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, wow, that guy was a man. He delighted us for an hour. And it's like, yeah, his life is not terrible. so great. <laughs> But like David Blaine, one of the coolest motherfuckers in the world. When you find out he has a pocket full of half folded quarters, yeah, that's a dork. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He jingle jangles with half folded quarters. A lot of David's uh, David, like I know him. A lot, a lot of, of his tricks, a lot of Mister Blaine's, are very basic tricks done incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Like the cigarette through the through the coin is like classic back of the back of the catalog yeah. comic book trick. He just does it incredibly well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not. Let's not even talk about how he maybe did it because that's incredible. Yeah, I will ask. Did he get her to sign more than one quarter? But no, that doesn't even apply. It doesn't even apply. It was just one quarter. It has to be. It makes me think it's a it's some sort of mechanism. Like it is the quarter. Like somehow yeah, I have a quarter. That, it doesn't matter. This is boring. No, no, that's what it is. It's what it is. Is like that he switches the quarter out in his hands and we can't see. He puts a folded one, but yeah, how yeah, it gets yeah. signed. And this is really where you get into the into the muck of it. Yeah, is when you consider a staff. When you consider magicians at that level are. It's not just one person. Right. You're looking at the grassy knoll. You're looking at like three shooters. Yeah. Meaning like. Sometimes I'll have you sign. I know I'll have you just totally disrespectful <laughs> in November, no less. <laughs> the month it happened, uh, I only know that because it's my brother's birthday. I get oh, you to wow. sign a card, and then twenty brother. minutes later, I, I help you. You have to sign, sign the same card. Now I have two ace of spades with your signature on uh -huh. it, which is why magic. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I'm going to stop. But like magic hinges on the principle that there's a social tension that you won't do the thing. Like for example. You won't sign your name in a ridiculous manner. Uh huh. You won't like black out the card. Right. Like you're not going to do that. And if you do, if you do, then they just move on and if do a different trick. If you do, you do a different trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fascinating. I don't know why more comedians aren't fascinated with magic because yeah. they're very similar. It really is. I remember once doing shows, I was in London and it was John Benjamin and Nathan Fielder. And we we're all doing shows together with Eugene at the Soho Theater and Nathan Fielder and John Benjamin argued about magic for four hours outside to the point where it ruined the night for everyone. Yeah. And John Benjamin was just like, magic's stupid. <laughs> and Nathan Fielder was like, magic is awesome. And it just went on. This makes me on like Nathan Fielder even more. For I already love so Nathan. long. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. went on for so long. I watched um, one of my buddy, uh, Elliot Terrell. I hope I'm saying that right, Elliot. He listens to this podcast. He's a great magician and a great tailor. Anyway, he was doing magic behind Largo. He uh -huh. did my show or he was at my show or something. And he did magic for Sarah Silverman, who was the worst magic audience I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> As someone who really? knows the tension of doing a trick. Yeah. Imagine Sarah Silverman, yeah. who I don't care. Elliot looked very cool the whole time. He handled it like a pro. Yeah. In fact, most of magic is just keeping your heart rate down. Yeah. That seems to be most of it. And she's just going like, 
take a car. Oh, you want me to take this one? Well, I'm going to take that. Like just every single way, like put it over here. Oh, so you can swap it. I was just like, Sarah, <laughs> no, <laughs> like just be tricked. Yeah. Let it happen. Be tricked. Yeah. Life sucks. Like it, I, I'm not saying it sucks, but like we're so rarely dazzled. Be dazzled. And when it, when you don't know, it's a mystery. Yes. And the answer, and that's true about all of life's mysteries. Yes. The answer sucks. Yeah. The Enjoy the mystery. That's right. That is the one thing I do kind of like about Catholicism. I was raised in Catholic, and I'm not Catholic anymore. But that, like, the idea that, yeah, well, there's a, there's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, you and they're the same it. thing, but also different. And it's a mystery. Yeah. And that's how it is just like, shut up. Don't ask questions about it. Yeah. Uh, but well, I do, I don't like it in that context, but I do like the, it in like the magic context. Because everything, when you get the answer, it's never satisfying. But even in, 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 I would call it healthy religion, the ones that say we don't know. But yes. we have a, se a series of symbols that can bring you towards or closer to, even this yeah. language is wrong, closer to the experience of, let's just call it reality. You don't have to call it like the truth of whether or not there's this or this or this, but just like actual reality, like dropping your own hangups long enough to be cleanly in the moment mm -hmm. and, and like actually a plugged in member of the whole, yeah. meaning the whole solar system, the whole multiverse, all that sort of stuff. Uh, they're like, these, these. this is a bunch of, Lie. This is a truth so big it can only be told with lies. That's one of my favorite uh, ways oh, yeah, people yeah, talk yeah. about metaphor. Right. Not just religion. Oh, that's interesting. But they're like, some truths are yeah. so big. It's Richard Rohr. He says, it's a truth so big it can only be told with lies. And he goes, um, always true, sometimes really happen. And I'm like, <laughs> when I heard, he's Catholic, he's Franciscan. Yeah. When I heard someone say that in like, I'm not Catholic, but still in the vestment, yeah. I was like, this guy's going to get, it's like, a rapper that's calling out the wrong rappers. Like, yeah. you, you can't talk smack about them. They'll come at you. But he's been doing that for, for 30, 30 years. You know what I just flashed on when you were talking about that? Is when we took mushrooms and went up into the mountains in Colorado. Yes. And we went up to that alpine lake. And we're yes. all sitting on this giant rock. And then this duck, just one duck. I remember the Made a duck. beeline for us. Yeah. That <laughs> and was... And Rich Blomquist said... He's like, oh, here comes this narc duck. <laughs> he knows, he knows. And he's like, hey guys, you have any, you guys got any, uh, oh, what did he call them? You guys got any jazz cigarettes? <laughs> you are bringing me back to the narc duck. The narc duck. It was just one duck. And of course he was like later when I thought about it, I was like, he's used to being fed. And so he thought maybe we had food. But in that, but in moment, that moment, I was like, this duck is coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Ramnas, who's right there. When he took uh, psilocybin for the first time, they all became convinced that the dog was dying <gasps> because it was just like laying there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, it's breathing weird. But the truth is, and yeah. this is what, what uh, I don't even want to say drugs, but things like psilocybin are great for, is it shows you what you've never paid attention to. Yeah. Have you ever just watched a dog breathing? The answer is no. Yeah. So when you are in that captivated place mm -hmm. and you watch it, you're like, is this normal? It's actually kind of, there's something kind of French and hauntingly beautiful about like, you don't know because you never looked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something French about yeah, there's it. There's something French about that. Yeah. I, you, here's something, boy, I, I don't think Kristen would mind. I remember on that hike, because it was kind of a hike. Yeah. Since then I've decided I, I don't like hiking on, <laughs> on No, narcotics. that's the only time I've ever done it. Yeah, that was the only time I've ever done it. Yeah. And since then, I'm like... And we were also so high up, I'm shocked that we were like all okay. The, the altitude. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot going on there. Yeah. There was a lot going on. But Kristen, this is the thing. It's not that mean. I was on mushrooms. Yeah. But she was wearing like a fisherman's cap uh -huh. and dark like Oakleys. Yeah, like big ones. Yeah. Like big, like too big for her face. Yeah. And once the drugs kicked in... I <laughs> I found it hard to look at her. Like it was very <laughs> confusing. Let's put it this way. No part of me went, that's Kristen Shaw. <laughs> After the drugs kicked in, I was like, she looked like the sketch on like a, a, a like something you'd stapled to a telephone uh, pole. <laughs> Have you seen this man? Like a Unabomber. And it's, it's like a yeah. Unabomber sketch. Yeah. And I was like, we're on a mushroom fueled <laughs> hike. There's Kurt. 
There's Val. There's Rich. <laughs> there's there's the Unabomber. Just pouring sweat like, ah, we're yeah. going to have fun. Yes. <laughs> Why? That trip was... It's not often that I, I haven't taken mushrooms. I talk about mushrooms a lot, but I haven't taken them that many times. But that trip, I remember specifically thinking, because I didn't take enough, mm -hmm. which is one of the most frustrating experiences yeah. of life, <laughs> whatever it may be. But I was like, shit, I was too scared. Of I course. took too little. Yeah. And now, when I, one of my mushroomy kind of feelings is I start seeing things painted in a very fine gold, like a, a gold yellow, uh -huh. but with the finest brush imaginable. And you'll, that's where you'll see like eyes or like an Egyptian sort of God or something. Yeah. Like just kind of like, it's like, here's reality. And they're right behind that veil. And you can kind of just see them dancing a little bit. Mm. That, that's one of my classic I'm on mushroom feelings. And I could kind of see them and then they'd fade away. They're yeah. like, sorry. You, not enough. Yeah. And I, but then I remember thinking, isn't it weird? And I still think it is that fundamental reality, like the deepest, craziest mystery of the, I'm going to say the unknowable source of existence is always true. Meaning yeah. it's not my ability to tune into it. Like, okay, I, I saw a sunset and the birth of my child or whatever. Like, that's all great. But Okay, also when I'm making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I'm depressed or like I haven't had my coffee or I'm tired, that reality, let's call it the fine painted gold sphinx orgy, uh -huh. is in the sense, I know it's a hallucination, we could disregard it, but to me it's a, it's a, a symbol of a deeper reality, is always there. Does yeah. that resonate with you? Uh, yes, and also it's a it's a way of also recognizing that like even in the uh, even in the most banal moments there is a there is a like a beauty and a mystery to the moment itself. Yes, if you can open yourself up to it. And what I think try to remember all the time is like it's there even if I can't perceive it, and that is incredibly good news. Meaning it is good news. Whatever this is. And this is, I'm just doing an undulating kind of squid like existence. existence. Alan Watts calls it like when you hit a gong, it's like a wah, 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 wah. Mm -hmm. But it's like yes and Which no. Which like connects right up with uh, particle physics. Does it? Yeah. Everything being a wave. Mm -hmm. And you're a surfer. Yeah. The only waves we can interact with. Exactly. But there's something that we're drawn to waves, the rise and the fall and all of that sort of stuff. But that wah, 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 particle physics thing, even if you're having the most closed off, pinched, dark, I'm alone, this sucks, yeah. this is meaningless. You're still, like it or not, a key ingredient in whoa, 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 and in that in that moment. Yeah. And when you consider that time is is just how we perceive reality, really that's that's irrelevant too. <laughs> yeah. I was I just I started reading this book that I think you would like. Mm. It's called uh The Physicist's Guide to Existentialism. Oh wow. Uh and it's like physics explaining like uh, uh <laughs> philosophical ideas. Oh wow. And the very first one that they do is um like are my is my grandmother who's dead is my grandmother actually alive still. Mm. Uh and and then she breaks it down. Hoffenbender, I think, is her name. Uh, she breaks it down of like how, like by Einstein's theory of general relativity and special relativity, that yes, like all time exists right now simultaneously. Yes, um, and that there is. It just depends on where you are in space time. Precisely. Yeah. Fucking a. Love that. Yeah. I should check that out. It's the, really interesting. The physicist guide to existentialism. Yeah. I love that. Uh, again, I already mentioned Rupert Spire, but again, a lot of, I find that if you don't like it, meaning I'm going to use spiritual language or, or psychological language, if your ego doesn't like it, I actually think that's a pretty good sign that you're, you're probably reading something that may be true. Yes. <laughs> meaning <laughs> it's not satisfying to the story of Pete or the story of Kurt. Mm -hmm. And what Rupert Spira has articulated so beautifully, he's like, your life is like a book. And it's all been written, but the way we perceive it is word by word, line by line, page by page, mm -hmm. and that's time. Yes. Like, meaning oh, it's that's all, pretty interesting. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. So we say this all the time, eternity or infinity, eternity is better because we're talking about time. Eternity doesn't mean never-ending time. It means the book. 
It means the book. <laughs> no, well, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were doing a riff. <laughs> no, no, no. But it means yes, the book. And mean, also, but we're, we're locked into reading at a specific rate. Pace. And we can't go backwards or forwards. That's, that's exactly interesting. Right. In fact, that's, a, that's an illusion. But it's all happening. At, eternity means no time. Uh-huh. So all of this actually is happening in a timeless instant. Yeah. But the way that we, I would say, graciously perceive it, it's almost like when people smoke DMT or something, it's like, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, because you've removed the, again, I would say kind, kind mechanism yeah. that goes, no, let's, let's this go is the through, best way to do it. Let's go through space time in this way. This yeah. is the best way to do it. It's the it least is this confusing. Thing. Is the, this thing is like the Vonnegut thing for like how we experience time, right? Tell me. He talks about it in, I don't know, maybe Sirens of Titan, but that the Tralfmadorians, these alien race, they see time as like one like mountain landscape. And we are on a railroad track looking <laughs> through a pipe at just one part of the mountain yeah. and we're moving at like just this pace. But right. they see the whole mountain. Okay, so I hope he doesn't mind me. Tell- I won't say who it is just in case they wouldn't. A friend of mine... And I've never done NN DMT, but like he smoked DMT. I have not. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little. It sounds scary. It does sound scary. Yeah. If I'm being, if you want to reduce it all to it, I go, it's just jumping into a whirlpool of infinity and it's Buck Rogers and I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And I've Even done all I the drugs. I've universe. done all the drugs and I've, I'm terrified done all of, it. of them. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I call it Buck Rogers. It's a yeah. little too Buck Rogers for me. Yeah. And I always use this example, but my friend smoked it and he was inside of a giant crab in a coliseum fighting another crab to the death. <laughs> and I was like, because for me, uh, those these substances are, are, are spiritual inquiries, meaning existential or metaphysical inquiries. I'm like, I don't know what is gained mm-hmm. by that, yeah. by that revelation. Yeah. Like I won. <laughs> I was the crab that won. I had somebody say, like, if you have that experience, it's hard to take this one seriously. And I'm like, okay, I can see that. I'm still just not called to it. Yeah. But my friend did it, and he had a very interesting experience, similar to your Vonnegut thing, which he was in a, a, another place, mm-hmm. and he was like, time was in that place was like a, a bundle of wire. Like, picture your box of Christmas lights, okay. and you open it, and it's, they're just all yeah. t- tangled up. And he's like... This was a universe where every being in that universe could revisit any moment in their life at any time. Yeah. And revisit it. And if you wanted to just stay at the moment where you had a three-way, you could just go yeah, and yeah, yeah. just do that forever. <laughs> and he was like, and a lot of them did. And he was like, but a lot of them, he was very surprised, went to the bad moments, which is yeah. honestly the way our minds work. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Like, we get so much identity and so much meaning and so much of that good I exist feeling from our trauma, from our disagreements, from from our altercations, all that sort of stuff. But he was like, uh, you could go to the moment you died, you could wow. go to the moment you were born. And he just, and I was like, how long were you there? And he was like, that question makes absolutely no sense to me. Like, I was there. Yeah. And if you were there. You are there. You were there. And he was like, I have as many memories from that experience as I do my own life. Would you prefer to know you, when or how you die? Ooh, I'd rather know how. You're waiting for me to I reconsider. No, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know. I don't think when, right? If we talk through it, like when seems terrifying. Because if you know that it's, even if you know it's in 25 years, yeah, then... Every day I'd just be going like 24 years. Exactly. You know, right? If you know the date, years. then you'd be like, well, I've got 15 years <laughs> left. I probably shouldn't start on this new thing. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to I finish won't it. I will learn Portuguese. Right? Yeah. 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 I, that's why I'm going with how. I thought that on the way in, and I'm having a, a, a nice time with you, and I don't think it's unrelated to the fact that as I was driving in, I remembered you could die today. Yeah. And that, that actually... I love the word imbues, but it imbues my day with added richness. In yeah. fact, I've considered starting with pod- I I'll never do it because it's too weird, but like having me and the and the guest read a statement. And in that statement would be like, we acknowledge that we will one day be dead. Yeah. And people w- will or won't listen to this, but this will exist and we'll be dead. But like that bad shows, bad podcasts, both hinge on for me, and it's just a guess. These people are thinking about what they're going to do after this. Uh-huh. 
Meaning they'll withhold a laugh because right. they're wondering how... Or they're that, distracted. Or they're distracted. Yeah. Exactly. And sometimes I'll say to the audience, I go, let's just pretend this is the last thing we're ever going to do. Yeah. And that would be great comedy. Like yeah. if you could really go like, at the end of this, we explode. Can you imagine that show? Yeah. And some comedians are... are I don't know if anyone's doing it, but getting closer than others. Uh -huh. And I don't mean being like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck everybody, <laughs> you know, like, or some grotesque confession. I mean, like, actually doing, and I'm, I'm trying to do it with you. I think yeah. you're doing a pretty nice job. I think we're doing it. Today is a good day to die. Today is a good day to die. That movie freaked me out. What? It was a movie? Oh, yeah. It opens with um, flat Flatliners. Oh. Kiefer Sutherland. It opens with this huge oh, it's flat crane shot. Oh, I had And he no goes, idea. today's a good day to die. Really? Yeah, oh, I had no idea. It's the first line of the movie. <laughs> and the Quoting premise of that movie liners. is very DMT. Yeah. Is they die. Oh, you remember? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I saw it in the theaters, I think. Okay. I just don't remember the opening line. Uh, yeah. Uh, I remember. I, could, I didn't see the whole movie, which is actually worse. <laughs> like, it would have been better to, like, see the conclusion but it I just, just yeah, it was it so scary. Horror I stopped it watching. Became, it became horror-y, which it I becomes didn't horror like, yeah. And then I was like, there and was I no still, the exploration stopped. I still have that. Like I remember briefly, I was very interested in astral projection. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? I think so. Yeah, it's leaving your body. Yeah, you know, like you know watching who, yourself. You know who says he did it? Who? Sinbad. Facts. For real? Yeah, Sinbad did this podcast and said that he could astral do it. Astral projected? And he said he stopped doing it because what? something attacked him. And he was like, I'm not doing that anymore. Whoa. So the times that I, this is, again, talk about pre-kids. Yeah. But before I had kids, I was sitting on my bed with a copper pyramid trying to astral project <laughs> or whatever it was. <laughs> and I would get <laughs> what's weird. And even if you remove the the woo-woo from it. Yeah. What's weird is you can lay down and imagine like a portal above your head pulling yourself out and you'll start to convulse. Like that's just facts, which is just, you could call it the placebo effect, the power of suggestion. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's crazy that you can like start yeah. going nuts. And then like Darren's I, right there. And who? Darren. D oh my Darren's God. Darren's right there. He's doing it. This is a bit daft, isn't it? <laughs> is he British? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. They all are. All, all the, all the, all the most, uh, uh, vocal atheists that are like, yeah, it's a bunch of nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> they're all British, which is so funny because their whole culture is like, God save the <laughs> yeah. queen, which is probably part of it. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Have you ever seen a UFO? No. Ghost? No. Ever almost die? Close. I mean, like, not like... Well, I know I didn't have <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was surfing in Rockaway, probably. This is when I still had my IT job. I worked IT. And uh, and I've been out, and it was getting bigger. And I've been out on a longboard. It was getting bigger, and so I I had I had a bungalow that was like a you know, right two houses in from the beach, and uh, so I wanted to switch out to a short board. And so I brought the board back, and then I got a phone call from work because I had just left work in the middle of the day to go surfing, and they were like calling me, be like, "What the fuck? Like, there's a problem." And so I had to be on the phone, and I think I was on the phone longer than I thought I had been on the phone. And so when I came back, the waves have gotten way bigger, but I did, I just assumed I was gone for like five minutes. They must be similar to what it was before. Yeah. And, uh, and I paddled out on, there was a way to get out at rock and, uh, at, you paddle out on the left-hand side of the jetty at 91st street. And it's kind of like a little conveyor belt. So the water comes in and then pulls out along the jetty. So mm -hmm. you just kind of get into it and it kind of sucks you out around the rocks. And then you're on the other side where the break is. And so that means there is a moment where you are in front of the jetty, which is just all big, giant rocks, and the waves are coming towards you. Um, but usually, you just get sucked out, and it's really fast. But I had not noticed how much bigger it had gotten. And as I was getting kind of like sucked out around in front, it just so happened that there was a set, a huge set coming in that I couldn't get past. And it was, I was right in front of the rocks. And so I just remember having no time, but I, I just tried to punch through it. I just tried to duck dive as much as I could. But the wave was already, it was already cresting over my head. So I'm pushing through the face of the wave. And then the, like I just got picked up and went backwards and then landed on the rocks. But I mean, what happened was the water had just, because I'd punched through maybe like 
I don't know, eight inches or something into the face of the wave, that water was behind me. So it hit the rocks first and almost made like a cushion. And then I, I flowed off the rocks, never actually hitting any rocks, even because though I know they were right there. Just enough. Just enough. And if I had not gotten that like six or eight inches in, I would have landed on a rock point on my spine. Well, that's what he said. Um, <laughs> that's what he said? If you hadn't gotten that six inches in. <laughs> Um, sorry, I'm watching a lot of The Office. Uh, that is horrible. Yeah. And I'm so glad you're okay. And is there anything like the ocean that can go from fun to sheer terror Isn't so it quickly? amazing? That's it what's amazing. so amazing it about amazing. it. When you go, that's what I always would love, going to the same beach like multiple times uh, like uh, throughout the course of the year and see how radically different it looks Yeah. on like yeah. a calm day and what it's like to yes. be there and then on during a hurricane and what it's like to be there, during a, a snowstorm, what it's like to be there. It's, yes. Totally well, this different is you places. Noticing the dog breathing, by the way. Yeah. That's what I think is sort of when I say holy, I mean it's whole. Like you're having the full experience mm -hmm. when you're when you're surfing. Even you talking about knowing the the you know current yeah. around a jetty is very much more in line with how human beings have been for the majority of our existence. Yeah. Is like knowing which way the wind blows. Knowing where animals would be. Exactly. Knowing which berries you would eat. And we're so disconnected from that. Knowing which ones are boys and berry and which one are poison berry. I mean, if Old there's ever Pete a bit. Holmes joke. If there's ever a bit that I wrote that you could have I absolutely love, I done. love that joke so much. I remember so doing it at your show in New York. I remember seeing it for the first. I remember the first time I saw it. It was at Invite Them Up. And I was like, that's a fucking amazing oh joke. Oh, my God. And that's so great. And like a lot of those jokes, it died a, a bloody death so many times. Really? On, on the road. Places where <sighs> on they. On the road, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of bits like that that I love, but they do hinge a lot on either pinch hitter phenomenon, meaning it's funny if you're the third comedian in a lineup and you're doing uh -huh. a joke like that and it's very novel. Yes. Now you're not talking about relationships. You're not talking about your job. <laughs> you're, this guy just brought up boys and berries. How weird. Yeah. But if you're just like the act, if you're just the yes. evening's entertainment. Uh -huh. You're not juxtaposed against anything except maybe your opener. Yeah, and people are like, "Oh, this is what we're here to. Exp this is what we're going to exactly expect. the 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 benign violation of the joke, meaning isn't it stupid that I'm talking about this? Yeah. Actually, becomes a disappointment to the audience that it would becomes, rather yes. you relate to their lives. Yes, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> I've never heard it it's stated been, that way because I have that problem. I know. I, yes. I, I don't mean I know. I Sometimes. mean I know because you and I are similar. Yeah. The other problem that that you and I, I'm assuming, could have. I'll say I have, is that if I'm doing 15 minutes, I have jokes that are like, forget it. Yeah. But if you do that same joke after already watching me for 30 minutes, uh -huh. it might only be okay now. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, I know if you took that joke and just opened with it, yeah. it would be unbelievable. But there's like a, because again, part of the joke is the material selection. Yeah. And after they know the type of material you select, it's going to be less funny yeah. because the surprise is gone. Mm -hmm. Unless already... you continually surprise them. Exactly. Yeah. But if you, like me, I sometimes go dirty, I sometimes go absurd, I sometimes go silly, It's you can't rely on the like, I can't believe he's talking about this uh -huh. 30 minutes into your act. That's why the second leg of a special is always so much harder. Yeah. And why I, every time I tape a special, I'm like, why don't I just tape four 15-minute sets? That's yeah. more indicative. Eh, because that's not what it is. I have, and I can't wait for you to watch the new special Which because I, I do have something that happens around the 35-minute mark that changes oh, wow. the tone of the whole thing. And that was something I remember, and I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but I remember asking David um, David O'Dockerty, who is yeah, uh, yeah, uh, about you know, his advice for an hour long festival show. And he said, something surprising must happen at 40 minutes because at 40 minutes is when the human body physically wants to no longer be seated. And that's when you start losing <clears throat> people. But if you surprise them with something that's completely new, uh, at 40 minutes, they'll, they'll stay for the next 15 to get to 55 minutes. And I noticed one thing that he just did, which was very simple during one of his festival shows. Uh, he just said, okay, well, uh, you know, let me finish up. And all of a sudden you're like, he's ending. 
and, but he did it at the 40 minute mark and he didn't end for another 15 minutes, but because he said, let me finish up, it, it just changed it yeah. where it's like, oh, we're not in the middle of the show anymore. We're at the end. Brilliant. But then it was 15 more minutes till it ended. <laughs> That's an old, uh, like, public speaking thing. Again, I got this from Ram- Ramdas, but it's a trick to say in conclusion. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's a trick. Yeah. To get, again, the human animal to go like, wait, what? What? What's ending? That's Already? really interesting. Yeah. My theory, and I don't really stick to this, is you should have a closer every 15 minutes, which is really interesting because yeah. I know I'm talking about your old special, but you actually, you open really, I'm obsessed with how specials open. I know I'm talking about your old special, but, like, you open with this incredibly strong canoe bit, which I'm like, you could close with that. Yeah. I think that's so helpful. And then about 10 minutes in, you do a bit, the masturbation bit, uh, Lauren walking in on you. I'm like, that's a closer if I've ever heard one. And that's what I try to do. I, when I look at my set list, I'm like, I just want a really big one every four four bits, big one. Four bits, big one. Oh, four interesting. Bits, big yeah, one. yeah, So yeah. when you close, you're actually closing for the fifth, the fourth, third, 15th minute. And then I like to do 15th. double closer if I can. I know that sounds incredibly yeah. strange, but like I like to, because again, that old special of yours, you go, this is my big finale. I, I feel, feel a similar burden, meaning like yeah. my closer is sort of out of nowhere. And sometimes closers are, so why not just do two if you have them? Yeah. If yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have them. If you have them. Well, I can't wait. I'm very excited for you to watch the new one. I'm very one. excited to see it. And maybe, and maybe I'll do, uh, I'll do it on, on that platform. Yeah. I mean, would. I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious. So maybe we'll have a, after it's all said and done, I sound, I sound like a nerd. I'm all <laughs> stuffed up. <laughs> Do you feel any, I was going to ask you this before, but when you're on your board in the ocean, and I know, I, I actually remember pretty vividly our, our religious discussion last time because I believe your mom had just passed. Yeah. And it, it's funny, I, I, I mean it as a compliment. If I remember something from an episode we did over, 10 oh, years no, ago. a long time like, ago. So it really had an impact on yeah. me. But uh, uh, giving you allowance to, Alan Watts says you're under no obligation to be the person you were 30 seconds ago. But like when you're surfing, mm-hmm. so many poets, forget mystics, forget religious thinkers, but like just poets or like talk about the ocean. Yeah. And feel, I, I look at the ocean, I get emotional. I look at it, I'm like, again, the way we perceive time feels kind and gentle. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we're on a thing with a thing, the ocean, that really seems to answer every question, even the questions we can't articulate. Mm-hmm. But I see the regeneration of the ocean. Yeah. I see the flow of the ocean. I see the apparent division of the ocean, meaning here's a wave, but we know that the ocean is really all just one thing. It just really seems to answer a lot. And maybe even you can't articulate it, but when you're on your board looking at waves from the back, which I think is such a unique perspective. Do you feel connected? Do you get a sense? Or or let me just ask this without leading you more than I already have. What are those feelings? What are those thoughts? And is that part of what you like about it? Yes, 100% what I like about it. It is a... uh, it is an emptiness that feels full. I, I would say that that wow. is how I feel when I surf. And that is, yeah, I'll remember that in ten years. An emptiness <laughs> that feels full is wonderful. And and I, sometimes I'll have to I have to help myself get there because I'll have a song stuck in my head. And that is for me at least. I've noticed when I'm looking for that emptiness that feels full, you know, moment my ego wants to hold on to control and mm. the song is often the way the ego attempts right. to hold on to control. It would rather you hear the song Rock Lobster than Vanish. Ro- yeah. yeah. It would rather yeah. Rock Lobster yeah. be on repeat without knowing all of the words exactly. That's right. I buy that box, I buy that Fucking box. them up. That's right. And then just repeating one little piece of it. Absolutely. And it would rather waste your fucking time. Absolutely. And so I have to quiet that. That's the only active work I'm doing is actively trying to quiet the the ego playing songs in my head. I find that so helpful. Again, not I'm going to use spiritual language, but like there's no devil, but there is an impulse to rob yourself. Mm-hmm. You lose what you rob from yourself, yeah. if that makes sense. And you re- and what is revealed is what you reveal to yourself. There's this weird dual thing, meaning both of those archetypal energies are in you. Yeah. I totally know what you mean. The days that I have where I just can't quite watch the dog breathe, 
Yeah. And I, even if I'm in the ocean and I'm surfing, it doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to have a great time. Right. Because I'm still, no matter where you go, there you are. And if there's a part of you that's unregulated, mm-hmm. regulated, I, I don't want to make it sound like too much of a discipline, but it does take an awareness to it's go. It's more like, of an awareness because the discipline seems scary. To me, at least. Scary, absolutely, yeah. where you're like, I'm going to beat this out of me. Yeah, I think yeah. it's way more gentle than it's that. It's way more. It's just like, and uh, forgiving. noticing. And I would even say forgiving. Yeah. Like being like, it's okay. That's okay. I, I see what's happening. I happening. know what this is. Almost saying I know what it is yep. releases it. I think that's exactly right. Yeah. Deeply profound. Also, being earthed is really important. Mm-hmm. And the ocean is grounding. Mm-hmm. And, and I, people say, I don't know, negative ions and all that shit. But that's right. Yeah. Where you have great thoughts by breaking water. Mm-hmm. Have you heard that? Yeah. Like mood ill. And, and from I, what I, I can tell. It's true. You know. <laughs> you should, we should find out from like the people who run the ferries at Niagara Falls. <laughs> They're like, just the they, happiest people. Do they, yeah. Are they the happiest people? Do they kill themselves less often <laughs> than like dentists or whatever? Yeah. That would be disappointing. <laughs> I noticed that like even in a hot tub or something, like again, that's grounding. Yeah. But also the water is moving and there's just something about that. I know it sounds woo woo, but it really... I, it seems to me that there's some research to it or whatever. I think there is, but I don't know it. Yeah. Have your, have, do you have any, just, just to, we don't, and then I'll ask you the last question. Oh, I'm David Ordor getting There you. it is. Um, any new feelings about the, the nature of what's happening? Um, like something's happening. Yeah. We're having an experience. Mm-hmm. We've already, gone into the the idea that time is how we perceive this thing yeah talk about mushrooms that mushroom trip we weren't together but we were together yeah at the same festival the epiphany epiphany i had was it's it's one thing thinging itself meaning the noun is the verb and the subject it's all Mm -hmm. just kind of collapsing in on it that doesn't mean just to let you know that I'm not taking it to the place of like, so there's a God who's t- poking and tweaking and judging and yeah. he's mad when you masturbate or whatever. But there does seem to be like a mystery that's kind of undulating, as yeah. I always say. Do you have any perspective or feeling about that? I mean, we haven't talked about it in a long time. My daughter asked me recently, because some kid in kindergarten was like, uh, really? do you sorry. believe in God? Like, so asked her for the first time. Uh-huh. And so she came home and she's like, do you believe in God? And I was like, oh. And first I was like, where did that come from? And she's like, Titus wants to, Titus asked me if I believe in Titus. God. Titus. And, uh, and I was like, I do believe in God. Um, and that was enough for her, but I was like ready with my answer for yeah, her, yeah, you yeah. know? She's already off. She's already she's off. On she's on like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, but I was like, I was like, it, it, it's like, it, I do come back to this thing. It is the, the spirit that moves through all things. You know, that is how, what I, I don't believe in a personification or whatnot, but I do believe that we are. The uh, the you I think the universe itself is the God that mm-hmm. love is the God like there is no God head I do not believe in a God head but I do believe in that that we are we are here for a reason that is for the universe to experience itself um, and that it's 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 what a lovely thing that we get to be conscious beings what a mm-hmm. what a treat because mm-hmm. um, it's it, they're they're just the little blips and we get to be a little blip yeah yeah. That's interesting. Any f- inkling that underneath who you really are is the big blip? That's a leading question. Oh, like a soul? Well, let's let's take what you just said yeah. to its logical conclusion. Yeah. And that's a condescending way. I don't mean that to be condescending. I'm yeah, like, yeah, let's yeah. explore it. Yeah. Meaning a lot of people feel that way. Not a lot, but I feel that way too. Yeah. And when I look at it, it's like, okay, if we're light bulbs mm-hmm. and God is the electricity, mm-hmm then the the animating principle or you know in religious language the the spring yeah so there's like a spring of water uh-huh. that's keeping you that is your awareness if that's who you really are uh-huh. when kurt dies the light bulb breaks but the electricity goes where electricity always was and will always be right the only reason i mention that is because it's awfully helpful when dealing with existential dread or feelings yeah. of like there has to be like a, a, a releasing, a forgiving of mm-hmm. Kurt 
and his life and his and his fear of death and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But an awareness. Go, let's go back to the ocean. Kurt's a glass of water, and when Kurt dies, he gets poured back into the ocean. Right. But nothing was added or taken away from the ocean. Actually, a wave is a better example because there's no glass. It's just right. a wave. It breaks. There's Kurt, and you're and going. And also very yeah. much again in line with particle physics that we are that consciousness is probably a a wave in the state of breaking, right? Yes. It's constantly in motion, and yes. then all of a sudden it has its done, and it's And you over. see it, the sizzle, like that sizzle, the pullback sizzle, yeah. look, feels like old people to me. The, fu- the pullback sizzle, You I know, like and, it's, yeah. and, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, that feels like the golden years, where you're just kind of yeah, like, yeah. oh, and but you kind of know you're going back. Yeah. That vibes with you? Yes, 100%. However, I know that was it very still leading, doesn't, but- I don't know if it necessarily qualms any fears because of there is the, the the fear of losing identity. You know, the if the glass is the identity of the individual. The container, the, yeah. Yeah, the container. Of losing that container because the container is all you know. Yep. Um, or being conscious of it. Because I think, I don't think you're conscious. Uh, you know, once we lose this conscious... Well, that's a great Thomas Merton who's a Trappist. Yeah. I don't think that's a Catholic. Trappist is not Catholic. But anyway, he says, I don't know much about heaven, but there won't be much of you there to experience. Yes. And yes. I'm like, yeah. 100%. So that's why I think it's cake and eat it too time, meaning if you want to tell me Pete dies and therefore Pete should be all his Peteness because yeah. it goes away, yes. And then the fundamental animating principle of Pete doesn't go anywhere and that's really who I am anyway. Yeah. And by the way, the fear is something that I think about all the time. I'm like, I think again that's something we forgive, like mm-hmm. the song in your head. Yeah. You go like, wouldn't it be nice to die in full trust of like nothing's happening anyway. I'm uh-huh. not I had this I, have you smoked five MEO DMT? No. Okay, that that one I I I, I don't want to say I recommend it, but that one I have Did you say five M E O T? Five M E O D M T. Five M E O D O. There's two DMTs. Oh, okay. Buck Rogers is N N DMT. Okay. And then there's Toad smoking Toad venom. Oh, okay. Just five M E O DMT. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, that that feeling was a death experience for me, and it was very much like you don't go anywhere. In fact, all of the coming and going apparatus, which is an illusion, is removed, and you stand naked where you always were. Oh, interesting. Meaning it's a journey to yeah, nowhere. Yeah, like yeah. death is a journey. Of zero steps, and it, it again. I know this was just a mystical experience, but yeah. it really told me that it was like being a lobster, like lobster being pulled out of its shell. Uh-huh. But really, going nowhere was important. It wasn't like up or down or this yeah. or that. Yeah. It was like, oh my god! Like it was, it was like a, a dropping of illusion uh-huh. and a homecoming. Mm-hmm. And when I say there was no me there, but there was the the bigger me. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to give you your cake and eat it too. Meaning, yeah, Kurt is gone, but um, also everything that Kurt was made of is there it's because there. everything is there. Yeah, and I do feel that um, way as well. In e- even in the sense of if we're going back to, I keep coming back. Some reading this book to like the physics of it. That each point in the space time continuum exists. It's just it right. exists, right. and so there is a you know, my mom exists currently, you know, like we will always exist. Our former selves exist. It's all happening at once. It is all happening at once and time is relative. And separation is an illusion. And separation is an illusion. other way you could say it is none of it exists. Meaning, and I'll be like more of like a Buddhist way. It's the dream of God. Yes. God fell, you could say God willingly fell asleep to experience itself. Or there are other traditions that say it's more, it's a little harsher. It's like, it's Maya. It's something to renounce because you're. There are all these horrible things, and it's like, yeah, snap out of it. This is what happens yeah. when you think you're separate. So stop, kind of stop you're thinking yeah. you're separate and come home. But it's 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 different ways of cutting the same cake. Yeah, I think like, so. Interesting, Kurt. Because yeah, I mean, I, I hate to be so transparent as to say like when someone vibes with the things that I vibe with I like it but the reason I like it is because it's so beautiful and peaceful and nice yeah and uh I don't know I think it might be the point of life <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah I always say like I don't think we're gonna be sitting around old men and being like 
remember Rafifi? Like, I, I, if we are, I think maybe we, <laughs> we, did we something missed wrong. a step. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, we're going to be thinking about dying. A yeah, lot more. I hope. <laughs> well, that's the Taoist thing. If you find your way in the morning, you gladly go in the evening. I think that might be part of the puzzle. Oh, interesting. I like that. All right. Um, did did I cut you off at any point no, of something you're trying not to at say? All. Okay, great. Um, in summation, let me just check the time. Oh, this is perfect. What a pro. <laughs> <laughs> what a pro. Real quick, the special is called Perfectly Stupid. It's not called Trust Me. It's called Perfectly Stupid, and you can get it at Moment. Yeah, you can get it at Moment right now. You Just go to perfectlystupid.com because it will link to everywhere that you can get it. Which, by the way... At any time, whenever you're listening to this, perfectlystupid.com. Something that's empty that's also full is a great model for, for the universe, according to a lot of yeah. different traditions. Yeah. And physics. Yeah. Like reality not being real. The chance of our eyes reporting reality as it is as being zero, zero, all that sort of stuff. All of this is just this beautiful, almost like DNA double helix of like, here's these spiritual things and here's these scientific things. And it's just one of the great joys of my life is to see them come together. Yeah. Any who's a woozle, um, check that out, perfectlystupid.com. Can you think of a time in your life when you laughed really, really hard? And I always like to take people off the hook at this moment. It doesn't have to be a great story. I'm not waiting for the. I light. mean, I think last time yeah. you asked me this, I think we talked about Flying Squirrel Loves It Every Time. <laughs> and, I think, <laughs> and I keep coming back to it. There is that was my good, wallpaper on my palm trio. Uh, That's how long I've loved that. We That's talked about it, I think, that. first time, oh, man, in. It, I think in South by Southwest 20, I don't know, 2012 20. or something. <laughs> yeah. But there was an onion, just it was just a picture with caption, it's just a picture of flying squirrel, and just a flying squirrel loves it every time. <laughs> flying squirrel loves it every time. It wasn't a story, it was just it was just, just the image. There's the no pic, there's no story. Flying Can squirrel. Can I tell you another one that I love? Time. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, cast members coming into the audience. <laughs> so it's just about a play where they're breaking the fourth <laughs> wall and they like rub the head of a bald man and stuff and it's just written from the pure panic. And there also was another onion that absolutely killed me, which was Christopher Walken writing an opinion piece about how much he loved hot dogs. <laughs> and it is the biggest, I never read something where, like absurd, yeah. where the joke was, this is it. Yeah. He's just, there were a couple lines that stick out. One was, you don't even have to cook them was one. And then the last paragraph, and you have to read it in Christopher Walken's yeah. voice, and they know yeah. you will, yeah. is like, to reiterate, I just want to say how much I fucking love hot dogs. <laughs> and I just I, I just oh. lost it in a Barnes & Noble in Maine. Oh, I remember so where great. I was. Isn't that nice? It's truly, it's a moment. Yeah. truly, I, I, I love that that's your answer <laughs> again. <laughs> Kurt, thanks, man. This thank was, you so much. This, this was, was so a fun. day off yeah, for nice. old Holmesy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Would you say keep it crispy for us? Keep it crispy. Now do it as one of your Bob's Burgers characters. Keep it crispy. Pretty much use my, <laughs> pretty much use my voice. What if I? <laughs> me too, by the way. What if that was my way of being like, because they're the same. <laughs> Fuck you, Kurt. <laughs> no, I just watched the one where you're the bully to Louise oh, yeah, and you yeah. steal her hat. Um, <laughs> thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you.